when was the last time you were afraid? Really afraid? All right, everybody, welcome to the Heavy Leather Horror Show podcast, your weekly guide to all things horror from the heart of which city, Salem, Massachusetts. And we're so lucky to be young and, and in love and in Salem. <laughs> wow. Well, we, we sure are, Stace, mm. especially today on Valentine's Day. At least Day. one of those things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me remind everybody, we are Salem's number one horror podcast. <laughs> And still, still holding at 189 in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's uh, that's impressive let's, too. Let's make that 188. We could, we could. Any day now, we'll uh, we'll, we'll punch it up. Hey, uh, Stace. Yeah. Let's remind everybody we're part, we're proud members of the Campaneros proud. Radio Network. Yep. They got lots of great shows over there. They got Movie Melt, and they got Songs on Trial, and they got Get Soft, and they got Movies About Girls Classic, even. Yeah. So many good shows. I think you should check it out. Go That's go. That's fucking awesome. Exactly. Go go campaneros. dot com, and you'll find it. Now, Stacy, it's time to find out uh, whether it's Edwig Fenix's birthday. Now, she's the queen of Giallo, as you know, Stace. Yeah. And of course, we don't want to miss to any uh, opportunity to celebrate her. Right. So I'll get the drum roll going, and then Andy will tell us because Andy's Andy is tracking us. Andy's following it. Yeah. Andy's tracking <laughs> this for us. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, here we go. Is it Edwig Fenwick's birthday? According to my research, no. It's not, ah. Stace. No. Oh. It's not. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Maybe next time. So it's our. Uh, it's our. It's our. Fingers crossed. It's our Valentine's Day special. Uh, and uh, one of us is not here, Kelly, because uh, she is uh, out uh, whining and dining Jared, probably uh, making out at the dumpster at Coda. <laughs> <It's very laughs> or in the dumpster. Yeah, I who knows? Know. I know that I know that they have a thing with the with the dumpster <laughs> back there. Are really cooking. To be fair, the dumpster is full of aged seafood. So <laughs> dangerous game I, there. But the, I heard that dumpster is one of the most romantic in Salem. But the rest of us is here, and we are, we're all happy to be together, at, at least, you know, so, uh, you know, if we're, not, um, if we're not with significant others, at least we're all here to, together, and that's, uh, that's important. Now, really and now, and now, and of course, Rui, uh, uh, we won't get into Rui's whole thing, but I am, <laughs> I am happy that Rui has a, Stacy a $30 box of chocolates to, uh, to work on <laughs> as the evening goes. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, well, let's crack it open now. Yeah, let's crack it open now. I, I would love which, to... which brand are they, Rui? Yeah, first. You know what? I'll plug them in the plugs. Okay. They're not. They're not branded. Oh, wow. it's very fancy. You've got a wow. They're not. No, they're not, no, no, they're not branded. So it means it's expensive. Yeah. They're from Look at this guy with his chocolate game. Yeah. <laughs> I know my chocolates. I think. Let's uh, see which one we got here. Oh, look at this! They got a little bunny. Okay. That's what we can play during the, the podcast. Wow, what, look at that. What yeah. piece of chocolate is Rui eating? Go ahead, uh, Rui. What, what, uh, what kind of chocolate is that? Looks to be a white chocolate okay. mouse with a piece of string. Oh, I know where this is from. Tail. Oh, you do, Stace? Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly where it's yeah. from because it's a mouse. Look at that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Impressive little guy. It well, I don't think I can eat the string. I'll though. eat it. It looks delicious, buddy, so enjoy that. Uh, well-deserved. Sure. Well-deserved. Well, I it's this. This is our <laughs> our ninetieth episode. So, in celebration, let's check out uh, what the top ten horror films of nineteen ninety were, according to IMDb ratings. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Uh, number ten with a six point four, sort of obscure Sam Raimi uh, horror fantasy that was very popular at the time. I'm talking, of course, about Dark Man. Nothing. That was a big yeah. movie. Yeah, people liked it at the time. I've seen yeah. it. I don't remember much about it, but I have seen it. 
It was, you know, kind of a precursor to the to the sort of dark uh, superhero movies right, of right. the of the day. Yeah. Now, you know, with the Superman that kind of thing. Always ahead of the curve, that Sam Raimi. Right. right uh, number nine. I remember seeing this one in the theater, um, it, which seems kind of lame of me. Uh, from Joel <laughs> Schumacher of Lost Boys fame, the story of a bunch of college students killing and then reviving themselves. Oh yeah. With a six point oh, six. It's Flatliners, starring <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland and Julia Roberts. Right. I love Kiefer Sutherland when he was when he was young, when he was hot. <laughs> so, he, so you don't love him anymore? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> when, when, no, I don't love him anymore. I like him. I rewatched Lost Boys because he's hot. I watched Flatliners because he's hot. Yeah. The Flatliners is a great movie, though. When so. uh, when when when, when did he plot. when did he turn? When did he go bad for you, uh, Lauren? Um, probably twenty four. Okay, 24. 24. Okay, yeah. Then you were out. Yeah. That was a sell by date. Yeah. Oh, we, we all have one. We all have one. You just never know when Bless. it is. May your sell by date be far from now. Why don't you start now. getting this Reagan neck here? Yeah, exactly. Uh, according to uh, to to polls yeah. out there, Stace. Yes. The sell by date for most men is 57. So I got a, I got a little bit left to go. And then after that, everybody thinks, you're, everybody thinks you're elderly. Beauty is in the be- eye of the beholder. Of, of course. I agree you, with what Stacey said. But when you poll people and you ask them, right. what, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you look at this person? Yeah. When, when people say old, 57. <laughs> For men. That means people have z- zero going on if that's the first thing you think it's of. It's much younger for women, unfortunately. But for men, it's, it's 57. Yeah, screw people. Yeah. By the way, uh, I, I, as far as I know... Kiefer was much younger during 24, so his sell-by date was a, a lot sooner. <laughs> oh, God. There, are, there are other actors from the same time who have aged m- much worse than Kiefer That's Sutherland. True, yeah. He's I, okay. if, if this is true, Lauren, I got about maybe... Uh, yeah, your days are never, buddy. Uh, I only got like eight years <laughs> left on my sell-by date. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number eight with a strong 6.9. It's the uh, lightweight family horror classic starring Angelica Houston. It's The Witches, everybody. Oh, yeah. I like that movie. Nicholas Rogue, right? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number seven is one I have not seen. I'm not sure uh, what it's even about. I believe it's a, a vampire tale. Also with a 6.9, it's The Reflecting Skin. Oh, Ken, at my job, we released that. Oh, you did? Um, I, I had seen it in the 90s when I was working at a video store, and it's really, it's, wow, that movie will stick with you. It is creepy with a capital C. Is it a, and, is, uh, is it a vampire tale? It's uh, ambiguous. Okay. It's you should tale. check it out. It, ambiguous, like we never really know if they're vampires or not. Is that? Is that... I don't think they're vampires, but there's so much weirdness that you sort of just get sucked into it. See what I did there? Yeah, sure. I see. Ah, uh, you missed it at first. So thanks for mentioning Squeaky. Number six, uh, same rating. It is a TV movie starring Tim Curry. It's recently been remade for modern audiences. I'm talking, of course, about Stephen King's It. Uh, which many people enjoy. Mm-hmm. They showed that a lot on Lifetime. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because it's a it's a moral. It has a moral to the story. That is, don't fuck with clowns. Yeah. Because somebody with great salesmanship sold it to Lifetime, and now they have to show it as much as it, they can. Whoever was doing <laughs> picking the movies was had no idea, like read yeah. the wrong description or, or something. Or maybe yeah. they were like, they were like, I'm gonna think outside of the box this That's time. That's really outside. They, of the box. They, they had a couple of weird movies that were about killing people, mostly like wife and teachers killing husbands and stuff, but yeah. nothing like horror. They have lots or, of movies like, like that. Yeah. A ton domestic, of like, domestic, yeah. domestic stalker movies, stalker and, stuff, movies yeah. and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, number five. Is this the one about a tree? I forget. It's Exorcist Three. Everybody. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Was it about a tree? No, The Guardian is about a tree. <laughs> Came out around the same time. <laughs> you, have you, 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 you haven't even. Can? Yeah, exactly. can you haven't seen the Exorcist One. No, I've never seen. I've <laughs> seen any of them. No reference point. I, no, I've, I've seen. I've seen Exorcist Two. I remember I've seen Oh, what? Oh, what? what? what happened to the first one? The first one is the good one. I know. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, and you know what? scary. Yes. I've never seen The Exorcist. What if we watch The Exorcist? 
together so we won't be too scared. Yeah. <laughs> I want right. to be go. there for that. I want to be there for okay. that. I will I will send you the Blu-ray if you'll do that. Well, yeah, we'll have an exorcist night for sure. Yeah. Uh, number yeah. number four. Really, that's really big of you to support Ken like yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, number four with a strong 7.1. It's a, a creature feature. Very fun film that spawned a still going franchise. It is Tremors starring Kevin yeah. Bacon. Oh, yeah. 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 Good one. They're on like, making this. Yeah, they're on like the ninth or tenth one as we speak. Yeah. Uh, number three is Thomas Savini's gory remake of Night of the Living Dead. That Thomas, was really good. Which I also oh, saw in yeah. the theater. Uh, number two, with 7.5, it's a very somber and moody mind twister of a film. It's Jacob's Ladder. Oh, yeah. Oh. Which is Still a... Still got to watch that. That movie fucked me up. Yeah, it's a, yeah, <laughs> it's a, yeah that's a, a crazy a, one. A very affecting movie. Total mood piece. And uh, the number one horror film of 1990 is another Stephen King adaptation with a very strong 7.8, directed by Rob Reiner. It's uh, Misery, starring Kathy Bates and James Conn. Oh, it's King's year, huh? And that way, the top horror films of 1990. Wow. By the way, I so would also, busy. I would throw in, <laughs> I would throw in Frankenhooker and, of course, <laughs> oh, yes. and, of course, Troll 2. You'd have right. to put that in there. <laughs> oh, that's a good, good point, but Frankenhooker, for sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jill Bob Brig just did a uh, Frankenhooker Valentine's Day special. Is that special. right? Wow. Yeah. Love Frankenhooker. Stace, it's time for Giallo Saturday. It is. And we'll, uh, we'll let everybody know what we saw this week. Every Saturday, uh, Stacy and I watch a Giallo film together. This week, it was 1972's Amok, a.k.a. Pursuit of Pleasure, directed by Silvio Amadio, who's known mostly for gladiator movies and sex comedies, but he did make a couple of Giallo. This one and uh, Smile Before Death, also made in 72, with some of the same cast. Amok stars the very beautiful Barbara Boucher and the also very beautiful and also very evil Rosal- Rosalba Neri. Uh, Barbara plays yes. Barbara plays uh, Greta, a secretary at a publishing company whose girlfriend Sally has gone missing after work for after working for a famous writer, uh, Richard Stewart, played by Farley Granger. Greta gets a job working for him too, so she can figure out what's going on. And she qu- stays quickly. She gets sucked into their perverse world of sex parties, drugs, booze, duck hunting, yeah. chain oh. smoking. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All those, all those terrible things. She enlists the help of an inspector with a weird mustache, <laughs> and, and they try to unravel the mystery of what happened to Sally before Greta suffers the, the in, same the fate. The inspector looks like that '70s Ken doll who you could put the mustaches yeah, on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, Stace, this one was uh, very unique. It was centered around uh, sex a lot more than on violence, so there was tons of nudity and sex scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them played out in <laughs> slow motion, including an extended lesbian scene with Boucher and, and Neri. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which must have bl- <laughs> blown minds in theaters in 1972. But honestly, oh, it must have had a lot of repeat tickets. But honestly, Stace, it seemed pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it was yeah, like, oh, come on now. Which. Aww. So it's surprising to me because, like I said, two of the most beautiful actresses to ever grace the screen are having a lesbian scene together, and you're like. All right, can we get over? Can we get on? After this a couple now? of minutes, you're like, "All right, <laughs> yeah. we get it." Because it's like a, it's like <laughs> s- slow motion. It's just yeah. bizarre. Yeah, it's not erotic. Maybe it's this that was designed by some kind of. Maybe it was designed by the Catholic Church. Well, there was the, the reason why they did it is because I think that one woman's supposed they're on drugs. You yeah, know? right. And so that's to be supposed like, to be like her point of view of like how things uh, are happening. But oh, and, yes, uh, I am only a lesbian when I'm on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be on drugs a lot. Oh yeah. Well, they All were. The time. They were. <laughs> That's they were, why it was just yeah. right. Both are true. Oh, and the uh, oh, and the soundtrack is great. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was just released on uh, vinyl and CD last year, and it's got this one song on it. Oh boy. Where it's just like somebody <laughs> with, <laughs> with an organ, and 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 it's got this chant of sexually over and over again. <laughs> oh, I love that song. Yeah. I, got, I got a little. Beat of Chita. <laughs> let's. Uh, it's on the Beat of Chita Chita Volume One uh, uh, compilation. Let's listen right. to a little bit of it. It's called Plaisir Number Nine or something. (laughs) Just goes like that for a long time. Sexually. Sexually. 
Crime. Sexually. Sing along. For really Sexually. long time. <laughs> Sexually. <laughs> Sexually. Sexually. <laughs> Irresistible. It just wow. goes on like that for. I love this song. You, you know what? I think it's a keeper. Send me that one. <laughs> yeah, you could put this that in your. Hit, yeah, you could put that in your playlists. Yeah. Sexually. <laughs> Sexually. All right. Uh, very good. <laughs> uh, anyway, overall, a fun watch. Needed more. I felt like it needed more violence than it had. But also. I also also mention this. Remember when she uh, meets up with the, the the guy in the the cabin and he fucks up that eel face? Oh yeah. Oof. Eel? What? Yeah. <laughs> like oh. like from the sea? Yeah. He catches an eel and then he he's to impress her. He's, he prepares it for her in, in in front of her, but it's like eel. a wriggling eel and he's like chopping it up and he like nails it to the boy. board. Yeah, he and nails it he, to the board and, and then he slices it down the middle. Oh my god! And, I, <laughs> and they, it, like. You, can't, do they cannibal holocaust this? Yeah, or, exactly. Uh, and then, and oh, then, but I mean, it's just oh, like, oh. Uh, you know, he's just preparing a, an eel. I guess that's the way you prepare him. But that sounds incredibly metaphoric, symbolic, and amazing. But it was, uh, it was, it was something. That bit was it's hard to, was. to watch. <laughs> something, yeah. Overall, yeah. sexually. <laughs> <laughs> As long as they weren't playing that song while he was doing that to the eel. <laughs> I mean, I mean that that guy was attempting seduction with that with that eel. He was, you know, yeah, he was well, showing off. Well, that guy off. was, you know. Well, we know that the eel really is the most phallic of fish. So. Right. Eels are so gross. I can't imagine eating one. But <laughs> oh, they're good. I'm sure they're tasty. I just can't imagine them. Uh, Stacy, I give uh, a mock. Uh, 3.5 out of 5 black gloves. How about you? Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. I would agree with that one. Do you have anything else to say about it? Um, No, it's pretty, it's just very crazy. Crazy. It's crazy. Okay. Thank you. The muck. That, that, that's, uh, <laughs> and that's... I kind of didn't like anybody in the movie. Really? Yeah, I yeah. kind of found them all a little annoying. Okay. <laughs> that's this week's uh, Giallo Saturday. Thank you, Stacy. And now, here we are. It's really here. It's happening. And, and here we are. And uh, it's just going to be neat. Okay? Let me uh, introduce the whole gang to you so we can uh, we get to know them a little bit and we'll all laugh together and have some fun. Uh, this uh, first guy, uh, well, all I can tell you is that dating is sometimes hard in high school, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> But he puts himself out there, and that's the important thing. I'm talking, of course, about Rui, the teenage werewolf exorcist intern. Hello. He was really hoping to blow us off tonight, Stace. That's the... (laughs) (laughs) And now I'm stuck with these people. Right. He was really hoping to not be here. (laughs) Viewers, please call help. What's the call number? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, we got that hotline. Oh, my God. I heard, Stacy. we got to talk about the hotline later because I, I heard that they're adding us to the hotline now Oh, at, on, on Squeaky's, <laughs> my God. Uh, Squeaky's request. So so now uh, you'll know when you call up. It's And, and uh, Ellie said that any uh, uh, voicemails go straight to, to Squeaky. Okay. Nice. Excellent. So, Hi, everybody. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, if, if you don't, if Squeaky's not uh, available, just ask for Rui or uh, any other teenage exorcist operator will help you. Thank you. Indeed. Or, or, or uh, what? Robo Andy. Oh, Andy, Andy, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, echo, you're echoing on us for some reason. So We remade Andy now. It's a <laughs> it's, 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 it's Long surf, moment. It's surf rock Andy. Yeah, it is. It sounds, it sounds, it sounds kind of cool, but... Say wipe out real quick. Hey, look who else is here. It's Stacy. No one messes with Stacy and lives. Hi, Stacy. How's it going? Okay. Hey, guess uh, happy Valentine's Day. Same to you. Uh, guess who else is here? It's the ambassador of goodwill. It's Squeaky Dave. Squeaky Dave. Hey, uh, Squiggy. Hey, Ken. What'd you do for the uh, for the missus for Valentine's Day? I, I bought her a, a carton of soy milk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. That's true. Yeah. Gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. 
Did, did she? It. Did she even have to ask, or or did you? No, well, not really. No, she just gave me the <laughs> sign. You know, it's like I had to buy almond milk because there's no soy milk, and I went back to the store and bought some soy. Oh, milk. that is so sweet, ladies. This is what Very she nice. should be looking for. Acts of service. Acts yes. of service. Right. You know there. Are, you know you, you these uh, milestones that you, you know that occur as time goes on, Stacey. Sure. You know. Well, you know, when it's all, it's very, you know, exciting and lustful in the beginning. And then you, you get this kind of what they call this romantic obsession thing lasts for a couple of years. And then it kind of slides into attachment, you know, for the next three, four decades. And, uh, and, and around, around that time, soy milk, that's, a, that's the height of romance. You kidding me? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> why, why won't that's high school exactly. girls understand that so I can save a lot of money? Yeah, exactly, man. You, you, can't, you just can't fast forward that quickly, unfortunately. Yeah. You gotta, you how, gotta, ma- how many chocolates have you eaten, Rui, uh, already? I believe five. Okay. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, at, at, at your age, you got to keep up the razzle-dazzle, buddy. There's just no way around <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, also with us, everybody's favorite rock and roll star, it's Andy Excuse. Andy, Andy, Andy. Andy, 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 Andy. Hi, folks. Great to be back Andy. with you again. Andy. Andy. I hope I'm still not echoing like I'm trapped in an echo chamber. Andy, 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 um, this next person, I'm pretty excited. Fucking hot shit. Real celebrities. And uh, let me tell you this. Not only is she the internet's number one celebrity lesbian. Ladies, she's single. She's available. Single. All you got to do is call into our hotline. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll bring it straight to her. It's Liz, everybody! All right, all right. Thank you. All right, take it easy. Oops, oops. Jesus. Oops, sorry. Hi, uh, hi, hi, Larissa. <laughs> hi, hi. Happy What's Valentine's up, Day. Hmm. Rui didn't get his date. I got stood up too, so it's great Valentine's. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Like mother, like son. <laughs> exactly. Why not? Go- next year, Rui. Next come on, year. Give my space a shot. Lassies, come on, hit her up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and last but not least, it's our resident bookworm. It's it's Lauren, everybody. Yeah. Woo-hoo. I inherit them all. Yeah. I inherit the wisdom of the ages. Every plot ever devised is here inside my head. Me and uh, me and Lauren were at the same rock and roll show the other night. We were. We didn't even know. I'm didn't so even, sad. Didn't I even know about it. I met up with you. Could have uh, met up with you, man. Man, so we went to see Ghost, and uh, we showed up uh, late, Stace. We didn't show up late. We just showed no. up when we wanted to show up. Right. And uh, they didn't have any wristbands <laughs> for us, so we couldn't get in. So we had to Ugh. go We had to go run around, like walking the around, around, around the arena, arena, trying to find some numbskull mm-hmm. to give us a, a wristband. But we made it on time. Yeah. And it was a good show. Yeah, it was a great show. It was one of the best shows I've seen. Wow. And then. Down. It was so much fun. And then is like a, our fourth time seeing Ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and and then afterwards, <laughs> couldn't get out of the the parking garage. Oh, Forty five minutes in a parking garage. That's terrible. What? Brutal. Mm. Where, where was this show? In, uh, in, the in Worcester. 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 Oh, so <laughs> there's a there's a parking garage right across the street, and that's where everybody was parked. And then so everybody left the parking garage at once, and we were up on the sixth uh, level, so we had to wait forty five minutes. And I had to pee the so entire Andy, time, Stacey. Stacey. Yeah. Were you guys aware that there was a, a hammered saint right behind you trying to get out of that parking garage? For the, yeah, she uh, was on. You, it, Sam was yeah. on the roof trying to get out of the parking garage. It was a whole <laughs> thing. But that's what you got to do for rock and roll. Sometimes you just got to suffer a little bit for rock and roll. So that's what. And we'll yes. as you said, rock and roll is a loser's game. It sure is, buddy. <laughs> that's why we're all here. That's the uh, that's the <laughs> gang, everybody. Let's uh, establish a little bit of atmosphere. Just so you know, it really starts to feel 
like a horror show, Stace. Oh, oh yeah. Now we got it. Now we got the creeps. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's find out what's on the menu. Boiled peanuts and sweet potatoes. Anything else? Oh, market basket ragu. All right. But wait, there's more. Like, like, like what? Like a, like a box of Cokes? You're not going to buy a box of Cokes. Probably not. Uh, Stace, anything Hamburger. else? Hamburgers. Oh, I love hamburgers. How about some ice cream? I'm going to have an ice cream after this. Me too. But before that, we'll be talking about some horror movies we've seen lately. Uh, Squeaky's going to present us with a new rogues gallery. That's always fun. We've got some uh, alarming news stories for you. And we'll be reviewing a film together. This week, it's Student Body. But first, everybody... Uh, hold on. But first... <laughs> It's this. Did you ever think when the hearse rolls by that someday you are going to die? All right, everybody. This part of the show is uh, when I tell you about some people that are not going to be making it for breakfast tomorrow. They died. Oh, they, didn't ju- they didn't necessarily just die. Although Ivan Reitman of Ghostbusters fame, he just died. Yeah. But these are people that uh, died in different uh, times in history on this very day, which is uh, Valentine's Day, uh, February 14th. So I, I, we must start, Stacy. Yeah. In, back in uh, the year 270, when uh, St. Valentine died. He, uh, he, what he did is he married persecuted Christians in secret during the Roman Empire. And when he got caught... He was beheaded. And then, of course, he was martyred by the uh, Catholic Church. And uh, somehow that ended up with chocolates and flowers in modern times. <laughs> but it, 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 be, it began with, the, with a, a violent beheading. As it, as it always does. Yeah. Somebody... Rather than one of those peaceful beheadings. Right, Every exactly. good romance. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we, must, we must give it up for, for old St. Valentine. For the for the work that he did. What what's what's my name? Just listen to somebody chop I, was, lettuce or something. Little, I don't know little, what they're doing. Little lettuce chopping. It's okay. In uh, 1994, uh, Andre Chikatilo. You know this guy, the Rasta Ripper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Russian yeah. serial killer. Oh, oh no. A Soviet slash Russian serial killer who murdered at least 52 women and children. <gasps> Oh, between uh, yeah. 1978 and 1990, executed by a single gunshot at age 57. Um, I read a book about the guy. It was incredibly disturbing. He's definitely one of the more uh, far-out characters in the serial killer game. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. That That's not uh, Citizen X, is it? Yes, same that's guy. guy. Yep. Oh, man. Yep. Oh, boy. In, uh, <clears throat> in uh, 2003, Dolly the Sheep First, oh, yeah. first mammal to be cloned from an adult cell dies uh, from a <sighs> progressive lung disease uh, at age six. Now, if you are wondering how long sheep live, the average like is 10 is ten to twelve years. Oh, but don't worry. There's like forty. They they get a, they get they get a lot of living done in that amount of time. As you know, as, if you've ever seen sheep, they're living their best lives at all times. <laughs> they live it up. Yeah. Oh wow. So, uh, yeah, so R.I.P. Dolly. In 1728, one of our local villains here at the Heavy Leather Horror Show, Cotton Mather, American Puritan minister in the Salem Witchcraft Trials, he dies age 65. His influence convinced the judges that they should allow spectral evidence, i.e. seeing something in a dream, uh, as evidence to crime. Uh, Mm -hmm. He he attended the executions, and he wrote formal congratulatory letters to the judges afterwards. He... Was a real rat fink. What a dick. Gosh. Fuck him. Yeah. Fuck him. him and his brother Increase can go and fuck themselves. Cause of death unknown, but hopefully painful. Probably I was. So. Back, then, back then, uh, you know, death was almost always painful. <laughs> back then, everything was painful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ironic. It was probably ironically syphilis or something. Back then, even yeah. just being alive That's was painful. Guess. Exactly. You were either cold or hungry all the time, I think. Hmm. And smelly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In the year uh, 2000, 
Screaming Jay Hawkins. Oh, oh no. American R&B musician. Uh, I Put a Spell on You, of course, it was his big hit. Yep. He dies at... Constipation uh, Blues. Dies at 70 of an aneurysm. There's a great documentary on Screaming Jay. It's called uh, I Put a Spell on Me that you should check out. It's on YouTube right now. Hey, in, uh, in uh, the year 2000 also, Charles M. Schultz, American cartoonist, Peanuts. <gasps> Nobody. Dies of uh, colon oh. cancer at age uh, 77. Yeah. When you get the chance sometime, go back and read some of those strips. They are very funny. And and consistently funny over decades and decades. Mm -hmm. Yep. Charlie Brown and the gang. Incredible talent. In the year uh, 2000, French film director Roger Vadim died. Oh. He had a habit of marrying his uh, film stars, including Bridget Bardot and Jane Fonda. He, of course, made Barbarella and also in God Created Women. As well as the excellent uh, Pretty Maids all in a row. Oh yeah, which the we best. Did, which we did on love the Movies of Our Girls show. Yep. Yep. Love that movie. And, and in, uh, I love that episode. And in 1960, he also made Blood and Roses, which is considered the first lesbian vampire film. Mm. Yeah. So he's got that going for him too. Uh, he died age 72 of cancer. And finally this week, and this one really seemed out of nowhere, but in 2012, uh, Whitney Houston, American singer. Oh. I will always Definitely love you. So I want to dance with somebody, et cetera, et cetera. Also, let's not forget actress from The, the Bodyguard. Right. Mm -hmm. Dies from an accidental bathtub drowning at age 48. Oh, oh God. Were in uh, drugs involved? In her last few oh, years, oh. she'd been yeah. a, she'd been known to be a, a, a crack addict, which is there you go. just the strangest thing work. for Whitney Houston to become. Because first of all, I don't know too much about crack, but I think it's the, as far as I know, it's the bargain version of cocaine, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about crack is that the high is way, way, way more intense and lasts less, and the addictive qualities are way, way more. So it's yeah. really, really, I mean, super dangerous. And there's drugs that go beyond that. It's frightening. Mm. Yeah. So uh, they're chasing that first high, and you're never going to get the first yeah, high. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, because I, I always thought that it was just like, it was cocaine for people that couldn't afford cocaine and she could afford all the cocaine she wanted so perhaps if she stayed with cocaine she'd still be here today I don't know but uh, I will say this along with Mariah Carey I, I think she basically ruined pop singing <laughs> yeah. I kind of agree with that all those yeah. extra notes Dolly Parton had it down why did she have to ruin that song the, the, yeah. all those extra notes in every single song so many syllables for, yeah. for every word just ridiculous but she could do it, Ken. Beautiful, amazing voice. I don't care. It's the way that, that she sang <laughs> was ridiculous and superfluous, and we could have done without it. And now, because now every young singer thinks that that's what they have to do. They have to sing a million they, notes. Nobody can be Whitney, and nobody can be Whitney. Sorry, I'm a really Whitney fan. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we need yeah. somebody to sound like Lemmy, you know? Right. I agree with that statement. Uh, anyway, there you go. Those are some people that didn't make it this week, and I am not here to revel in anybody's deaths except maybe for the bad guys. Sorry, not the yeah. good guys. Cotton Mather. <laughs> uh, but we do this, uh, you know, not to not to celebrate anybody's death, but to celebrate life because we're still le living and still breathing. And because of that, anything is possible. And that is, and that's just the best. So, to all those people that didn't make it, I say two things. I say one, R.I.P., rest in peace. And I also say, see you in hell. There they go. All right, everybody. This is Bye. pretty. This is pretty exciting. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. G goodbye, Cotton Mather and. See you later. Uh, and, uh, Bye, Cotton Mather. Rotten hell. Yes. Bye. -bye. Uh, 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 that's telling him. <laughs> I'll see you, Whitney. All right, everybody. Now it's time for Rogues Gallery. Just a build-up, Stace. Yeah. It's a build-up. There we go. It's time for a rogues gallery where Squeaky yes. brings us back to the... <laughs> Squeaky brings us back to the golden age <laughs> of exploitation. All right. Uh, what do you have for us this week, Squeaky? Squeaky. Uh-oh. Where'd he go? Muted. Muted. <laughs> Come on, Squeaky, it's get it together, buddy. Yes. He's not even there. Ken, yeah. Ken, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad you asked because I have a very special 
edition of the Rogues Gallery. This is the the third installment, <laughs> and we're already up to a special, a uh, very special episode. <laughs> yeah. This is in honor of Black History Month, uh, a constellation of black exploitation horror history, or if you like, black exploitation horror history constellation. Okay. So, uh, you know, nine to ten years old Squeaky was obsessed with horror, especially all things Dracula. Still am. My friends and I put on our own, in fourth grade, we would put on our own stage production of Dracula for our school. And I was the title character, of course. Wow. Uh, nice. Now, yeah. We read, huh? Dracula? You, you know it. Now, we'd read about Black Yellow from 1972, and man, I couldn't wait to see it. Um, eventually, it hit the Wednesday afternoon movie on TV, which is around 1977, 78, and it lived up to all expectations. I mean, seriously, a Black Dracula? How cool is that? I mean, you, you, I don't know if you've all you have seen this, but I'm sure most of you have. Sure. Now, considering yep. how how many black exploitation movies were made by white guys it's extra cool that blackula director william crane is also african-american dig these tidbits from his wikipedia page here we go he was one of the first black filmmakers from a major film school to achieve commercial success a graduate of ucla's film school crane unlike many of the so-called quote la rebellion unquote filmmakers who made films of a deeply personal or political nature Crane made work consisting almost entirely of mainstream and genre-driven works. I got a hats off to that dude. Now I read somewhere that he indeed said that he set out to make films that would make money, and Blackula did. Crane, who had directed episodes of the Mod Squad prior to his feature debut, mostly continued to work in television after that, but does have one other feature film credit. Yep, you guessed it, Doctor Black and Mister Hyde from 1976. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Now, if you might remember, that stars two other two great prolific black actors, Bernie Casey, whose other foray into horror was 1972's Gargoyles, and Rosalind Cash. Great filmography. Her other horror titles are the great female empowering horror adjacent The Omega Man from 1972 and everyone's favorite um, Tales from the Hood, 1995. Now, the transfixing female lead of Black Ella was none other than the late, great, and absolutely lovely Fanetta McGee. Yep, Marlene from Repo Man. Right. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Alex Ca Cox ca cast her, not because of her turn in Black Ella, but for her incredible screen debut in the essential snow set in a spaghetti western, The Great Silence from 1968. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. She's so good in that. Uh, she's so good in everything she was in. Oddly enough, uh, Crane did not direct the great sequel, Scream, Black Girl, Scream, but that stars the incomparable queen, Pam Greer, who we yeah. all rightly worship. Yeah, we all rightly worship Pam Greer. She's amazing. I was trying to remember, Ken, there's a part in either Foxy Brown or Coffee where she turns the tables on the white guy and she cut some with a razor and she says a really great line do you remember that i don't remember i mean i remember that she had because she kept the razors in her hair in her afro yeah 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 yeah. but i don't remember the line yeah, it was great really good but i i actually got to to see her in person when there was a uh, retrospective of hers at the film site at lincoln center years ago and she was amazing her stories were amazing i bought her book and the movies just hold up and anyway blackula himself was played by the stupendous William Marshall. Dude already had over 20 years of prestigious stage experience and some TV show stuff, including Shakespeare and other highfalutin stuff. But he's most famous for playing the African Prince of Darkness, rightly so, because he's so he's got such a great screen presence, got that deep voice, he's good looking, he's tall, all that stuff. Uh, his Marshall's one other horror film that I'm aware of, at least, is The Black Exorcist herself, Abby, from yep. 1974, starring a recent um, featurette from uh, the, the This Week in Death, Car I'm sorry to say, Carol Speed, who's also uh, great in her own right. Other notable black exploitation horror films include the notoriously awful Blackenstein. Watch Oof. it at your own risk. Unwatchable. Oh. Unwatchable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The great, the great 
on the other side of the spectrum, voodoo female revenge thriller Sugar Hill. Good one. Where where she, she her boyfriend gets killed by a, a, a villain and she turns uh, she does some voodoo zombies stuff on him. The hilarious satire with a. Uh, Rosie Greer and oh, what's that guy's name? I forget his name, but it's the the thing with two heads. One right. Of the, yep. One of the two or three two head movies. <laughs> That's a really funny movie. The time traveling pimp possession shocker that I recommended last week. JD's Revenge. And the singular art house vampire film Ganja and Hess, starring yeah. Dwayne Jones. Dwayne Jones, very important because he was a star of The Night of the Living Dead. One of yeah. the most important horror films in regards to black history since it features a black hero a serious anomaly when it was released in 1968 and if you all go over to shutter and watch horror noir they'll talk they'll talk about this stuff you'll see william crane interviewed and there's a really great part where they say you know um the Dwayne was uh, hired for night of the living dead because um george said he was the best actor that showed up for the part there you go uh, is that there it? you go. Thank you. All That's right. it. That's a Black History Thank edition of, of, of Rose Gallery. Rose Gallery. Beautiful. Nice. nice. Good job, buddy. Thank you. And uh, in Har Noir, do they mention what's that movie? Is it Welcome Home, Brother Charles, where the guys? Oh, I don't think they mentioned that, but that's a crazy movie. Is that's it? the guy that made Penitentiary. And go ahead, Ken. I know what you're gonna say. There's this movie. It's called Welcome Home, Brother Charles, and it's about this guy who um, he gets wrongly accused or something. And he gets thrown in prison, and um, he spends his time in prison training his penis to become prehensile, so that it goes out at night. His penis like grows. And like goes out at night and strangles people. What? Uh, yeah, it's true, and it, it's a real mess of a movie because the editing is all over the place. <laughs> but that's happens. that's right. That's, that's the it, guy that made penitentiary movies. Yeah. Uh, thank you, buddy. That was uh, that was an eye opener. Thank you very thank much, you. and thank you for celebrating uh, Black History Month. My pleasure. Great job. All right. Uh, thank you, and now we will uh, move on. To it's t- 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 it's time once yeah. again mm-hmm. for bad news. All right, a lot of bad news out there. You know it. I know it. We got more of it. So let's just get to it. Uh, Andy, what do you got this week? Well, this week, February second, uh, a giant bunny loses to a competitive eater in a rabbit versus human salad showdown. Well, <clears throat> well, what? <laughs> well, first of all, I don't really see how we can I, I I think if it was multiple bunnies maybe it'd be okay, but if we're just comparing stomach sizes, how's a rabbit going to compete? Yeah. How is a rabbit got to compete in this world? Right. Rabbits are, rabbits are fast. Rabbits are known for being speedy and I quick. actually saw a video That's... clip of this on the news. Yeah, you did? Yeah. It was amusing. Well, to recap, okay. in case, <laughs> Stacey, in case you uh, <laughs> forgot every nuance, I'll go over them again for you. Um, let's see. February 2nd. Lettuce-loving giant rabbit honey mega bunny suffered a resounding defeat on Tuesday. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. That's more of a yeah. kangaroo, but it's the best I got. Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, fine. Hopping, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see. Boinging, if you will. Uh, anyway, Mega Bunny suffered a resounding defeat on Tuesday in a uh. head-to-whiskers salad-eating contest uh, against competitive eater Rena Wong. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Wong, who had been eating competitively for four years, managed to put away 3.5 pounds of chopped salad in 10 minutes. <laughs> that is a lot of salad. <laughs> it's in 10 minutes? Yeah, God. Or, or for any length of time, frankly. Um, organized by Chop Stop in Glendale, California. Um, honey froze in front of the giant plate of lettuce and <laughs> ate none at all. Oh, no. Face- yeah. But uh, springing into action, uh, or as they would have it in the article, faced with humiliating loss, faced with humiliating loss, Team Bunny was permitted by organizers to bring in a second rabbit. So off the bench comes oh, there we go. Precious All right. Rabbit. Uh, but Precious also failed to eat a single leaf. Oh, oh. epic fail, as they say, Stace. Yeah. Epic oh, fail. Man. 
Uh, owner Lewis Moses, who breeds the giant Flemish rabbits, oh, Flemish, well, there you go, uh, was not surprised by the result. Um, rabbits are not scarfers. They're not like dogs, just scarf it down quickly. They're nibblers. They nibble all day, all night. So they eat decent amounts, but over a period of time. So, you know, Lewis Moses, who knows his business, is telling us that these droughts don't just gobble salad like um, Raina Wong, for instance. Um, let's see. Wong, who doesn't eat salad at all outside of contests, said she did not pay much attention to her competitors. Uh, she says, it was more like a challenge to myself and listen to this kids when i do contests and challenges usually i don't really pay attention too much to what the competitors do i think the best for me is just to see the best of what i can do oh well that's a nice little bit of wow. empowerment but that's easy to say that's easy to say when you're eating fucking salads against rabbits mm -hmm. i mean you know i i could win that too and winning mrs huang i mean it's not for ms huang <laughs> it's not that big of a deal <laughs> But also, salad seems so dangerous. I, you'd, you'd feel pretty bloated, wouldn't you? I was going to say your stomach wouldn't appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. Now my yeah. question to you, Stace. Yeah. So she ate three point five. That's a pounds. lot of salad. You're a big salad eater. Yeah, I can't. How know. much salad can you bang down? Do you think you could bang no. down a pound of salad? How much no. ranches on it? And when you start Ew. piling lettuce on a scale, do you realize the the mound of lettuce that oh you take? Oh my god, that's a huge. lot of that's, I mean, because what is lettuce? Because lettuce doesn't weigh heavy. anything. <laughs> So, that's so what do you think was weighing it down, Stace? I hope that she they put a lot like, of croutons I in there. Saw the, I saw the video, and I was like, how is that salad? Because it all looked white, so it seemed yeah. like it was just covered in dressing. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, it, didn't even look, it didn't even look green in the video that I saw in the news. And it was really funny because the rabbit was just sitting there. I mean, if like, you... If you <laughs> wasn't eating anything. If you weigh it down with dressing, then that's yeah. probably... And, like, cucumbers are kind of heavy, yeah. you know. So... <laughs> Those are some giant rabbits, Jesus. Huge rabbits. Yeah, the I rabbits know. were just not interested. They were like, I am not going to compete against this lady. Yeah. <laughs> I have a theory. What's, what's My mom theory? makes really good rabbits, too. Oh, yeah? yeah. Wow. <laughs> the, oh, boy. Uh, what she the rabbits were Their mom makes saying, good rabbits, too. Oh, good thing Kelly's not here. Listen, we, we eat animals. There's nothing we can do about it, Rui. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I'm what do, you don't have time to show to this week. Uh, what were you going to say, Andy? Oh, um, my theory is that the rabbits were just thinking, this is my life. I don't need to debase myself in some sort of competition <laughs> yeah. with a clown. Yeah, yeah. right. Right. Exactly. They just they just didn't want to play along. And even if they even if they did, like I said, I mean, like their stomach sizes are much different. Yeah, and they don't eat. I it's mean, false equivalency. It, it, it seems like it was just obviously it was just some kind of weird promotional thing, but um, for for the woman probably, yeah. um, because every, they know already that the rabbits aren't gonna beat her or eat a bunch of salad all at what once. It, what would be what would what animal would make for a good? Uh, contest a good salad eating contest. A dog. A, do a dog. A dog's not going to eat salad. A though. salad eating contest. <laughs> yeah. Not a dog. Dog doesn't want to oh, eat a salad. A koala. Oh, a cougar. A gorilla. No, koalas eat slow. Yeah, they. A eat, gorilla. Yeah. They eat all day. But they, but they will. They... But they eat. They will eat a lot. Is it faster or the biggest just... amount? Oh my God, you're there watching a salad challenge contest and it takes like three hours <laughs> hear me out <laughs> i would <laughs> putting like a mountain lion or a cougar in there would certainly make it a lot more yeah, interesting but, but they but they're, but they're carnivores they're not gonna eat salad I, but whoever said it andy i think uh he's right a, a gorilla will eat salad he'll, yeah. he'll bang down salad all day and Gorillas if you beat him, it'll crush your skull yeah exactly yeah man, so it's, man it's versus so give him sanex and alcohol Man versus <laughs> man versus gorilla is a good one. I think that's that's what we should go for next time. The uh, rabbits, it's folly, it's folly, Stacy. Well, they already knew that. It's not. Yeah. It's Are not. you? So you think the whole thing was a ruse? Well, I mean, the owner of the rabbits already says in the article that rabbits don't eat like that. So it wasn't like they didn't know he was, going uh, into it. He was probably telling them the whole time, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." They weren't listening yeah. to him. Yeah, but we. Yeah. I bet he bet against his rabbits. Yeah. This, this is kind of a disillusioning truth that uh, rabbits aren't even going to compete in a, in a salad. <laughs> yeah, <in the dogs>. exactly. <laughs> rabbits have nothing to prove. They don't even care. Yeah, us. exactly. The whole thing, uh, you know, it's outrageous. Most most animals, they, they want to compete, Stace. Yeah. Rabbits, they couldn't care less. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Here's yeah. one thing. I think that the rabbit just didn't know where it even was that day. I mean, we could bring, we could argue that. It was like, yeah. I think I, I think uh, uh, Lauren didn't has know it was competing. Lauren, yeah. Lauren has a point. It's just I don't, like here I am. I yeah. don't know why. I don't know if there's enough <laughs> brain. Why in, am I sitting on this table? Yeah, I don't know if there's enough lettuce. brain inside the rabbit's skull <laughs> to to know that it's in a competition. Have a babe on. Like you could tell, you could even tell him beforehand. Look. This is very important. I need you to eat all this salad, <laughs> or I'm going to lose a lot of money. And you can stare into that rabbit's eyes and tell it that it's not. It's not going to understand no. a thing. He doesn't know. No. Is it that know. it's not going to understand, or that it's not going to care? Well, it's also Flemish, and if he's speaking English to it, I mean, that's yeah, not going to help either. You're right? Yeah. <laughs> this got to pick up the Dutch, you know. Dutch dialect, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, rabbits are more readers, so if you like <laughs> lecture. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, that was none of that was ever going to work. That plan was was fucked since Jump Street's days. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Hey, uh, next story, please. All right, North Dakota woman is arrested and faces up to six years in jail for <laughs> slapping sheriff's deputy on the bum. Oh, so you're telling me that these cops can kill you if they want, but you can't even slap them on the ass now? Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, ev- what what a world we live in. Oh, boy. Um, A North Dakota woman lived with a thing for a man in uniform, was arrested, and now faces up to six years in jail for slapping sheriff's deputy on the bum at a tavern while he was was carrying out a compliance check. On Friday night, Sandra D. Cobbs Sabo, 50, at the Crossroads Tavern located just north of Bismarck when she allegedly jogged over to a cop as he and another officer were conducting the bar check on an est- uh, establishment before taking a large swing and slapping him in the buttocks uh, in an aggressive manner. Cobb Sabo slaps the uh, officer's backside with the heart was hardly a gentle love tap instead causing the officer pain according to an affidavit oh of the uh, probable uh, really of- like it ca- what a liar. It caused him pain get the fuck out of here <laughs> enough how- to get work in this comp yeah ex- how hard can a drunk 50 year old woman and the guy has stuff in in his back pocket anyway, Stacey. He's Actually, fucking... I think when you I think you answered that question right there, Ken. I just you know he complained come on. because he wasn't pretty enough, probably for him. Maybe. Uh, the officer who was not named then placed Cobb Saho under arrest before taking her into custody. The Grand Forks Herald reported, Cobb Sabo advances did not end there however as she continued to cat call the deputy calling him a sexy cop even after she was taken into custody oh she was having a good night oh boy <laughs> yeah. uh, while en route to uh, burley morton detention center she also asked the officer multiple times if he was married while emphasizing the fact that she oh, quote boy. loves the man in uniform Unquote. Um, Cobb Saho allegedly stated she could not believe that she was going to jail for slapping a sexy cop on the ass, according to a criminal complaint. Despite uh, what she viewed as a harmless flirtation, Cobb Saho now faces serious jail time, up to six years a full, uh, if fully convicted, after prosecutors charged her with one count of simple assault against an officer of the peace, a Class C felony, and sexual assault uh, for offensive contact, a Class A misdemeanor, mm-hmm. Cobb Sabo would have faced lesser charges of a Class B misdemeanor, uh, for simply assaulting, had for simple assault, assault, had the victim not been a peace officer or correctional institute employee acting in an official capacity. Um, online court records show that she was eventually released after posting bond after making her first appearance before Burley County District Court Judge via Zoom on Sunday. Go to be a fly on the wall. Uh, <laughs> She was also banned from the tavern along with a no contact order from the <laughs> officer whose bottom she slapped a on Tuesday, February 4th, yeah. uh, February 1st. There you go. Records well, show. 
At I mean, least one cop will know now how we feel when men hit on us or do that shit when we don't want to be hit on. Sad story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Not so fun, eh? I guess maybe it's a goose goose for the gander kind of situation. Like, you know, but realistically, uh, you know, cop didn't get hurt. It's ridiculous. No. I, you know, it's... It Find me a picture of this lady and I will tell you why he complained. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, remember, it's never okay to do this. But it is. But then, you know, hitting a cop, it kind of... I'd say it evens out there a little bit, morally speaking. <laughs> well, oh my God. she learned her lesson, I suppose. Don't slap cops. Oh, I'm sure. Don't slap cops. I mean, most of us Probably actually, not. most of us actually know that. Yeah, I was gonna say most people <laughs> would not do. That. Yeah, most, yeah, most are aware. Of yeah, cop. <laughs> yeah. Most people. That's one of the first things they taught in first grade. Stays. I remember. <laughs> we we had a lesson in that. Don't hit cops. So <laughs> you know, yeah, she must have missed it. But what if they're really hot? Then, what if they're a sexy cop? Yeah, well then you got to find some other. Way. You got to find some other way to let. You let can't that have be a known. conversation with somebody. Sure, you can just tell them that they're a sexy cop. Yeah. They won't arrest you for that. North Dakota, she's probably homeschooled. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. For that. Yeah. Go so, ahead. so they ha they have a saying back in Puerto Rico when there's a hot cop, women will say "arrestame policía." It's like "arrest me, police officer." Oh, so that's God. what she should have done. That was the name, Stace. When be, remember, I briefly I had mm -hmm. the uh, Heavy Leather Music Video Show. Yeah. And we recorded the we, me and Cammy, we did the uh, the intro. Right. We recorded the intro music, and that was our band, Hot Cop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna dress up in cop outfits and and, yeah. and play some shows, but we, we never. <laughs> well, we well, didn't. Uh, well. the, uh, yeah. the 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 Shems did that. We played in L.A. And we dressed up like cops. We, well, the pr problem was we only wrote. A 30 second intro to the <laughs> TV show. We didn't write any more music. That yeah. was the problem. That yeah. sounds yeah. very village people. Oh, it, it was. was very, it was very <laughs> village people. Oh, yeah. And it was great when we did it because Artie, our singer, dressed up as a female cop. There was, uh, there was a band in town for a little while mm -hmm. that dressed up like uh, they had a name. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget what the name was, but they were chips. They were chips themed. Like, remember the. The TV oh, show, yeah. TV show. Yeah. Eric Estrada. Yeah, they they dressed up like, like, like chips. Yeah, they dressed up like chips. Yeah. What's that? I forget. They were like a they were like a Chris classic rock cover band, except huh? they were chips themed. That's interesting. Oh you got You got to do whatever. It's, it's kind of original. So, you got to do whatever so, it takes to get uh, so many levels there. Yeah, yeah there's mm -hmm. a lot happening. What makes them chips and not motor cops? Themed? California Highway Patrol. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, Larissa, what do you got? Oh, I got something from a state I can't pronounce. Sure you can. Ooh, Give it a see. shot. Connecticut man Boom. torches you... his house using flamethrower to clean snow. To you clear snow. You got it. Connecticut, you nailed it. First try. Yeah. Well, guys, I have to check state, on my dad I real quick. I would think that that one would be the one that you'd be able to pronounce for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one with all, uh, all L's and R's. Those are very difficult for me. I was just um, um, I was just talking about this at, at work the other day, that uh, back in the 60s and 70s, they would market uh, flamethrowers to remove s snow, which seems, seems insane. incredibly dangerous. Yeah. I doubt about one for that. But also, oh, also seems like a lot of fun. Hmm. Let's find yeah, out what happened yeah. to this until numbskull goes, in until it goes awry. Connecticut. Until we read about this. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Connecticut firefighters responded to a home on fire, according to fire officials in the town of Seymour. The homeowner That's... admitted that he tried removing snow with a flamethrower when it caught the siding of his house ablaze <laughs> as he accidentally ignited the side of the home. An exterior wall was in flames when firefighters arrived, but it was quickly extinguished and the home was saved, according to a Facebook post about the incident. We do not recommend the use of flamethrowers or any similar devices as an attempt to melt ice, the Facebook post said. These devices are in fact designed for weed management and should not be used for snow <laughs> removal. You fucked up again, kid. I, I, 
I understand. Weed management? <laughs> I knew Larry yeah, oh, was going to yeah. say that. Not that kind of weed. <laughs> Not that kind of weed. <laughs> Damn it. I can, I mean, I can, I see how this happens, obviously. It's mm -hmm. very easy to just light stuff on fire with a flamethrower, especially if you don't really know how to use a flamethrower. Right. Yeah. What is a flamethrower? Let's start with that. It's actually, th these things are actually more like big torches, but it's more fun okay. to call them flamethrowers. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, an actual flamethrower just spits like flaming gasoline everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which is, ah. would be super dangerous. I think this guy <laughs> probably just went mad with pyro, uh, pyromaniac, you know, ten. Pyromaniac. Yeah, pyromaniac. I, I would, it. I would like, I would like to wield the flamethrower. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Well, but, come on over, Ken. We'll, we'll get you set up. Your dad really has one. Yes. Yeah. And he's used of it. Of course. Of course. And he's, he's used it for, for, for weed management? Is that what he's used it for? No, let's be real here. There, become, there comes a certain age with many <laughs> men where they just need to buy things that are very destructive. Yeah. Um, so but what, he said what, he was going to use it for clearing snow. Yeah. Oh, he, he did. Oh. Okay. He cleared a little snow. Yeah. Three years ago. <laughs> Did you get to use it, or were you? No, no. He never let. I, I'm. I'll never forgive him for that. Did you? Did you? Uh, did yeah, you watch him while he was utilizing it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's underwater. a good. I think your guy, your dad, made the right judgment not to let you <laughs> yeah, have it. Seriously. It's for no, sure. You. Ricky, now, why would you say that? <laughs> Ricky, you're no goddamn funny. No, well, and Rui, that was a wise decision. Yes. Yeah, and I'm responsible around fires yeah. except that one time. Well, wait a Nobody minute. got hurt. Will you uh, Will you inherit that flamethrower at some point? I'm sure you will, right? <laughs> Are you suggesting I kill my father? You I'm not. I am definitely not suggesting you kill your father. I'm asking you. For if, his flamethrower? If, if, <laughs> if, if his will? If you'll get his... Definitely, his, definitely oh not. Rui, really, you already <laughs> backstepped like a hundred times from getting that flamethrower. Well, you and know. for my only son, Rui Jose, to find the <laughs> <water>. <laughs> 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 Knowing that if he hears this episode, he's gonna give it to my sister out of yeah, spite. Right. <laughs> Changing as well now. All right. So uh, thank you, Larissa. Uh, Stacy. Uh, crash suspect says Dale Earnhardt's ghost told him to drive the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> you know when the uh, man when the when hey, the intimidator says he doesn't want to get uh, later either. <laughs> Was it fucking Edward Cullen in New Moon was appearing next to him, being like, "When the uh, <laughs> when the cops show up, stage, they'll just say anything and get out of it." You know. All right, let's find out what happened. Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, there we go. A man accused of intentionally driving the wrong way on Las Vegas's 215 Beltway told a judge that the ghost of NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt Sr. told him to do it. Daniel Asaf, 51, faces charges of attempted murder, driving under the influence, and battery with a deadly weapon after vehicle crashes reported uh, on January 28th in the area of Lake North <laughs> Drive and Fort Apache Road near Sahara, Sahara Avenue, uh, KVVU reports. In a court hearing Tuesday, Asif told Judge Ann Zimmerman that Earnhardt's ghost told him to drive the wrong way on the freeway in order to get the mayor's attention <laughs> to bring NASCAR back to Las Vegas. Yep, that makes sense. He's the NASCAR prophet. Yeah, that checks out. Zimmerman noted that Asif reportedly had heroin and methamphetamine in his system at the time of the crash. It's got nothing to do with it. He's the NASCAR <laughs> prophet. I, got nothing to do with it. Just more evidence. Prosecutors asked for a $200,000 bail for Asif, including alcohol monitoring and a ban on driving. The judge set bail at $500,000 in ordering Asif not to drive and calling him a danger to the community. Oh, come on. Reinhardt died at the age of 49 in a final lap crash at the 2001 Daytona 500. I thought you liked to rock. Uh, you know, this dude just wants to bring glory back to Las Vegas, and he'll do whatever it takes to get there. Yeah, but including he's putting, heroin. Other, in, putting other people in danger. <laughs> well, he will be. Cru he, listen, he is willing to allow himself to be crucified for this cause. Exactly. You know? I, I think his, his his truth is a noble one. Yeah, I think he's a hero in his own way, Stace. 
No? No. Okay. <laughs> no? No. But he's trying to bring back NASCAR. There, listen, remember. He almost kill, he there, killed people. There's only one race. The human race. But what about NASCAR? Hey, let's talk about some video nasties. We're going to expand our weekly video oh, segment to take you nasty. into the back shelves of your local video store. Back where it says horror videos and where kids are devouring some awful films that we call the video nasties. That's right. We're about to talk about some awful films uh, that are called video nasties. You know, we're all uh, horror fans here. And so we watch horror films. And at this part of the show, we give you recommendations of things that we've seen this past week. Who is making it's, all that racket? It's Lisa. Getting up, walking Sorry. around. <laughs> just, just, meet, just meet yourself when you get up. All right. Uh, let's get to it. Stacy, what have you seen this week? Um, I've seen a couple of things. Okay. I saw um, Countdown from 2019 on Netflix. Okay. Uh, it is about... Um, there's this app that people download on their phones and it gives them their death date. Sure. And some people end up, you know, being like, you know, you're going to live to be 80 something or 90 something. Then some people get, you have two days to live. (laughs) And, um, the story opens where it's a group of friends and they all download the app. And, uh, one girl, uh, goes to leave with her boyfriend and he's drunk and she won't get in the car and her thing told her she had two days to live or a day to I forget what it was oh no it was like an hour or something from when they left yeah so she doesn't get in the car with him because he's drunk and she decides to walk home she gets in her house she thinks someone's following her she gets all freaked out she locks the door she goes in the kitchen and whammy she like disappears into the ceiling and drops down oh my goodness dead damn damn yeah so that's how they like open it for you to see how the story is going to unfold. So you can't you can't thwart it, you can't change it. Right. Like they don't like, you know, the one girl um the 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 guy who is in the car accident, the guy at the drunk the guy who's drunk actually crashes his car, ends up in the hospital, and then the nurse who ends up becoming like the main character in the movie. Um he had told her about the app. And he's like, this is going to sound really crazy. This is what happened. So she says, screw it. I'm going to download the app on my phone and see what's going on. And then that kid dies. So she, you know, so it becomes this whole thing where she runs into somebody else who has it. And then they try to figure out how to cheat this app and not die. Right. Or how to cheat death, really. Right. Well, the death app. The death, yes. Right. Countdown. All right. So, yeah, it's really, um, it was okay. It was okay. They play it pretty straight for the kind of movie it is, which is a little weird. Um, there's also this rapey doctor in the movie, and it's played by um, the guy from Twi- the, do- the doctor from Twilight, um, <laughs> Peter Ficinelli. Fis- what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it was really, I was like, wait, he's a doctor in this movie too? And, um... Also, the kid who plays uh, Axel in the middle is in it for like five minutes because right. he works at the hospital. Okay. Um, but it was it was okay. It was not. I think that it could have been a lot crazier. There's not. They don't really show too much. Um, when people get killed, they're not. You know, it's not like crazy or yeah out of control. And I think they could have amped it up a little more than they did. But it was okay. I mean, if you're looking for something you want to watch, it's kind of light. You don't have to think about it too much. It was Countdown. all right. There you Countdown. Go. Countdown. Uh, I also watched um, horror-adjacent sort of movie called Kimmy from 2022, and it's on um, HBO Max. It's about this. I saw it. Do you see it? It's about this girl. No, no, no I, I saw it advertised. Uh, I put it on my list. Yeah, it's about this girl who is um, works for uh, uh, like Amazon type company, and they have this app called Kimmy, which is like Alexa or Siri. And um, her job is to listen to like snippets of people's things, like things that they're asking for, you know, on the app, like Kimmy. um, I want the one of them is like, I want kitchen paper. And Kimmy doesn't know what kitchen paper is, but it's wherever she lives in the country. It's paper towels. So she's supposed to report all these errors so that the app works better. I'm sorry, but what part of the country do they call paper towels? 
Hey, kitchen can, paper. Can, paper. I, can I have the I have the answer? Mm -hmm. What is the answer, buddy? The answer is Japan, not the country, not not in a part of our country, because Hatsumi, my wife, calls paper towels kitchen paper. Yeah. Well, on this, it's definitely not a Japanese woman who's saying it. But that's really weird yeah. because, but but I, when you said that, Stacy, I was like, oh, Hatsumi. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think any any. I don't think there's any like. That, I mean, I've never heard anything. I've never heard. Anything. No, no, it's only uh, for for all my knowledge is only japan so that's really weird but at any rate that so that that explains like what her job okay is. all right so so she overhears what she thinks is somebody being sexually assaulted on one of the things and she decides to try to figure she tries to report it and the people she works with are like don't report just don't worry about it that's not our job blah 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 and she's like how can i not report this i think and she isolates the sound and she listens to it back and then she thinks a crime's been committed so she calls up she finally finds out who she can call so she calls the woman she goes in there and um she want, they want to uh call the she wants them to call the fbi and they're trying to like uh deflect that and then this guy shows up who is involved in some unsavory stuff with who's involved with the app but it's up to some unsavory stuff and um which is what the crime is and then he tries to unseemly, unseemly things. So I'm trying not to give away too much. But at any rate, he sends people to uh, get rid of her, basically. Okay. So that's the story. That's All the right. Basic well, what'd you story. think of that one? It was actually it was pretty good. It was um, it was uh, it was it was kind of fun and and, and um, it wasn't super um. What do I want to say? It was. I thought that it could have been a little crazier than it was but uh it amps up towards the end okay so there you go everybody a uh, couple of app horror films sorry i didn't take notes so i'm trying to go <laughs> and uh app related horror films kimmy and uh the countdown from stacy very good thank you stacy uh Rui, how about you buddy well i watched a, a short flick from uh the millennia 2000 called coven all right. Not ringing a bell for anybody? No. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Are you sure it's not COVID? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it was. I don't think it was COVID. Coven. C-O-V-E-N. Yes. Hey, you need to see American movie. That's that. Yeah, exactly. You didn't get that joke. Yeah. Are you sure no one <laughs> vandalized a copy of the movie Oven? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever no, see? Uh, yeah, wait, but wait a minute. That is, Rui, have you ever seen the the movie uh, American movie? Uh, I have not. I know that it is a documentary about Coven. Right. Well, it's about Coven. It's about Coven. Coven. So we're <laughs> what we're trying to figure out right now. Did you watch? Did Coven? you watch Coven? <laughs> and you're just calling it Coven. That's the question. <laughs> no, it's it from the year 2000. It's spelled. Wait, wait, wait a minute. But that's Coven <laughs> spelled. Oh my uh, God, for <laughs> I feel like we're doing a who's on first thing here. Good luck. Good luck, really. It's for God's sake, don't ask for to spell. It's C O V E N. I know what how it's spelled. That's Kevin. It sounds like it's pronounced Kevin. Who was it directed by? Uh it was directed by uh some uh Midwestern white dude Mark Brochard. Yes, exactly. Exactly it's Coven. It's Coven. What? That's what we're trying to tell uh, you, yep. buddy. You got to see American movie, Rui. It's Coven. Oh, Coven. It's definitely Coven. <laughs> okay. I don't his, know his uncle Coven. died for that movie, for crying out loud. Oh? Well, just so I could mispronounce it on the Yeah, end. exactly. Uh, or he could mispronounce it and fuck you up. In his film, yeah. <laughs> but listen, they're from the Midwest. Are you going to trust their pronunciations? <laughs> no. Well, it was yeah, it was fun exactly. figuring that out. Now, tell us what you thought about about, <laughs> and please please call it with its, to its proper title, Coven from now on. Thank you. All right. I'll, um, so I saw the movie, Coven. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, eh, mm. Coven. Um, so Coven was really uh, it was <laughs> wrong. Um, it was, it was shot in black and white. It's about this guy who uh, joins a, like a self-help group after he almost OD. Well, he does OD and almost dies. 
Um, except it turns out this uh, that this support group is full of weirdos, very much weirdos, weirder than the people here. Um, so, Coven. Um, yes, you got it. Is Dang. like I said, shot in black and white. Um, which here's the problem: it's pretty shitty black and white, so it's kind of hard to tell what the hell is happening. Uh, think like Tetsuo the Iron Man, but not as high def. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> you know that kind of thing. So it's hard to tell what's happening. Um, the not just that the the video, but the audio. Oh, the audio is terrible. Like I had a hard time following this movie because I'm like, what? Huh? What'd you say? Right. Um. You know, and as, as I'm, I work with uh, speakers, I should be getting ready for a lifetime of that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know. It wasn't that great, um, but I like the charm of it. I like it. It was pretty creepy. It was kind of a Midwestern gothic, which was really cool. Uh, I'd like to see more movies with that because the Midwest is a creepy region. Sure. Yeah. Not as creepy as our region, New England. I mean, we're the creepy region. Um, and I'll take that. To, I will fight that. I will fight that. Is that it, Rui? Yep, that'll Thank be you. it for me. Thank you. Rui saw, fight it. Rui saw Coven, everybody. And, uh, Coven. And he Coven, enjoyed it. He enjoyed right? it. Yes. Yeah. I, well, I, I see that. I, you know, Ken, I, I don't know why we're talking about COVID. You know, we're trying to frig- put that, uh, you know, on the back burner. But also, uh, check out American Movie. You'll love it. You'll love it. Will do. Will do. Uh, Larissa, how about you? So, I saw um, a couple of things. Let's start with something I didn't like. I saw the new series Murderville on Netflix okay. with Will Arnett. I liked the first episode. I think it was something new. It was fun to watch. So <clears throat> the whole idea of this show is that uh, Will Arnett is a detective that nobody wants to work with him. So they have a, they bring in different new training detectives to work with him, which are all celebrities. And they are... Will Arnett and the celebrity do not have a script. Whatever they talk amongst each other is improv. The rest of the characters do have a script and follow a script. So the actor with the clues and what was going on with the case needs to find out who is the killer, right? So the first episode was with Conan O'Brien and I found it very funny. Um, and he did guess who was the killer. And then I saw the Annie Murphy one. She's the chick from uh, Chips, Chips Creek. Creek. Yeah. And it was good. And then I tried to saw, try to watch the Charm Stone episode five times and I fell asleep. So <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if it was just Sharon Stone or the show, but I couldn't continue watching it. It was a good first episode and the other episode, but the other ones were like stupid and boring and led to nothing. So I couldn't keep watching it. So I only recommend two episodes. If you want to go to sleep really, really quick, watch the Star Wars film. All right. Um, I also started watching also on Netflix, Catching Killers is another series about... Uh, different serial killers and how they manage to catch these people. Obviously, the name of the show is very telling, Catching Killers. Um, the new second season is already available on Netflix. I started with one of my favorites, but very stupid serial killers, BTK. Um, so I'm in the middle of it. It tracks the cases and how they solve it. It's really good. I will highly recommend that one. And then I saw the movie it follows uh, that somebody watch here it's a 2014 movie and i picked this one because i was like let's watch something kind of like valentine ish and this was one of the recommendations that said that i should watch for valentine's day um so it follows the story of something that we can see so it follows it and it's kind of like a monster killer that changes 
the way it looks depending on the person that is seeing it, right? And only the person that has this kind of like mark uh, is able to see them or the person that was before them. So the whole thing is that it's kind of like an STD. It opens with a girl running from nothing, right? She's running, she's hysterical, we can't see anything. She gets to a beach, calls her family, tells them she loves them, and then suddenly she's dead and twisted like a pretzel. Wow. Right. Yikes. Then we start the movie and this kid, this girl is like super excited because she has a date with this cute guy. She goes on the date. They sleep together. Then he kind of like, uh, I think she, he uses formal or something. She passes out. And then when she wakes up, she's tied on a wheelchair. And the guy is telling her that he is really sorry, but he has passed it on to her. And that now she needs to pass it forward. And if she doesn't, this thing will kill her. The advantage of the thing is that it walks really slow. The bad thing is that it can morph into anything and anybody. So you can be like walking and see a person walking down to you and you don't know if it's the thing that's going to kill you or a regular person. Right. So <clears throat> the whole movie is her trying to decide if she's going to pass this. She's going crazy because she's seeing things. The thing that scared me the most, and I think it's the only type of movie that scares me, is home invasions. So this thing goes into the house, and one of the recommendations that the first guy tells her is that never be in a room with just one exit, because then you can't be able to, like, get away from it, right? So the whole movie is this very slow thing chasing her and her trying to get rid of it, trying to sleep with people, but she also doesn't want to pass it because then the other person is going to kill. And the thing is that if the person that you pass it to doesn't pass it forward and it gets killed, then the thing goes back at you and starts chasing you again. So it's sure. a back and forward, which made me question, how long is this chain gonna be? Like how <laughs> far will it go? And then people start dying, will it go all the way back? But that was like something that my brain was asking. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, glad this finally made it to a survivor survivor. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the person to see this and figure out how to, how to, how to freak it out. Right on. I, I just don't understand. Like, I get it. I get how they kill it, which we don't know because the ending is very open. So we don't know if they kill it or not. But the whole thing while the movie was going, I was thinking, what if they pass it on person number 20? Oh. And then that person doesn't get rid of it and kills 20. And then 19 doesn't, probably 19 knows, right? Because he's the, the closest person to 20. But what about 15? 15, it's no longer thinking about this. Somebody's coming, it's gonna get killed. Like, word, like, how do you track this thing on the back? Um, I like this movie. I like the acting, actually. There were a couple of kids that I have seen before. Like, one of the kids is from Freaks and Geeks, I think. Um, wow. And I will highly recommend this one. It's, it's, it's a nice watch. Um, it has its parts that are scary. The killings are pretty decent, especially that first one, which you don't know what's going on. And then you see this girl twisted like a pretzel. So I will highly recommend it. It's available on Netflix. And that's all. There you go, everybody. Uh, Murderville. She likes the first two. Third, forget it. Maybe it'll pick up later. Who knows? Uh, oh, I, I did random. I didn't follow the order. And, so. uh, okay. Uh, catching Killers. Uh, okay so far. And uh, and really likes It Follows. So those are there's his recommendations this week. Very good, Larsa. Uh, I got a couple. Uh, the Final from 2010. I watched it on Tubi. Bunch of bullied kids in high school kidnap the bullies and then torture and kill them. But they haven't planned it out very well. And before you know it, they're turning on each other, too. It's a pretty good revenge flick with, you know, some twists. Although I found the bullying more intense than the revenge. I think... The psychological part? The revenge worse. should be worse than the, than the, yeah. the, the bullying. Uh, no. there, there is a lot of finger chopping, and I've really had it with finger chopping <laughs> in horror films lately. <laughs> it's never going to end, Ken, it's, I'm telling it's like you. A, it's, like a it's like a cheap but very effective... A uh, way to show some violence, and but I just I can't watch all this fucking finger chopping anymore. It's driving me crazy. Also, you end up feeling bad for the bullies, which is confusing. Maybe Whoa. maybe nobody wins in a revenge scheme. I don't know what they're telling me. Could be no, a, that couldn't possibly be. Could be a moral, moral in there. I'm not sure. 
Nah. Uh, that was the final. I saw this f- other film that I want to tell you about. It's called Wither. It's from 2013. I saw it on mm-hmm. IMDb TV, and okay. it's and it's the it's basically the Swedish Evil Dead. If you oh. saw, if you saw the American Evil Dead re- reboot, which came out in 2012, this yeah. is this is basically the same movie only with hot Swedish people. Oh, that sounds much better. Relentlessly <laughs> grim, relentlessly gory. I mean, there's a crazy gore scene every other uh, scene. Uh, I liked it a lot, and I'm really kind of surprised that uh, it's not more well known because it is. If you like Evil Dead kind of movies, you know, um, high, and, like, and if you like hot Swedish people, exactly, high intensity, you know, heavy uh, gore, uh, you know, it's there for you. Wither, check it out, and you can watch it for free. And uh, the other one I wanted to tell you about uh, is called The Bell from Hell. It's from 1973. Ah, oh, wow! Watch Classic. it on, watch it on Tubi. I had weird '70s flashbacks when I was watching this, and mm. when I looked it up, it turns out it was part of a TV syndication package in the mid '70s. So I probably did see it on TV when I was a kid, and uh, if so, it probably upset me quite a bit. There's a lot of things in this that would upset uh, my a youngster. It is a very grimy and mean-spirited story about a guy whose aunt gets him committed to an asylum, and when he gets out, he formulates a very complicated revenge scheme to kill her and her three daughters. But, of course, she's one step ahead of him. So he ends up getting walled up in a church tower. But guess what? He planned ahead on that, too. And he still gets his revenge from beyond the grave. Uh, Everybody in this movie was awful, especially the asylum guy who played really sinister practical jokes on people before he turned to murder. whole movie is pretty repulsive, but I still I liked it a lot. I liked it. I liked it because it was repulsive. Huh. Sure. Also, there's a church tower with a big bell that serves as the centerpiece of the movie, the bell from hell. And guess what happened? On the last day of filming, the director fell off of the of the, the tower and died. Mm. Oh, that's right. That's God. right. It's a crazy movie. Or maybe he threw himself off. Nobody knows for sure. Wow. Yeah, I remember this one. Talk, talk about but your cursed your cursed movies. The grave. If any movie is going to be a curse, it's going to be a bell from hell. Yeah, you know yeah. it. And it has a it has a cursed vibe when you're watching it too. Yikes. Bell from hell, everybody. Check it out. Those are my picks. Let's move on to Squeaky Dave. Ken, I, I watched on Tubi The Castle of the Living Dead. Man, what a, I'm sure I've seen this before, but it's been so long that I completely blanked it out. Because this is a a, a classic weirdo gothic horror from the sixties, black and white. There's this troop, and it's also an international picture. You, you're going to hear what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, it's there's this troop of street performers in the Gothic ages, whatever this is, like hundreds of years ago, and uh, they do this thing. It starts off with the opening where they do this 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 um, hanging gag, where like there's this this in their skit. It's like vaudeville in like the 1600s or whatever. And and they do this skit where there's this guy who's an executioner and he tries to hang the guy and the guy turns the, ta- ta- the, turns the tables on him and the other guy gets hanged, but everyone's alive. It's fine. And then they get this invitation for three gold to- coins, which is like a fortune, to go to this count's castle and do a private performance. And and also, let me add that there's a dwarf in the group, and there's a, a very sexy woman. I forget her name, but she's a, an Italian um, cinema sex pot. And there's Philip Lee Roy, who is a very prolific French actor. And they all uh, they all go um, on their uh, you know like the gothic horrors. They always have like a, they're like a road movie. They go oh, down. These are three separate people. No, no, it's, it's like a troop. I said. Okay. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's- the, the the sexy there's a dwarf there's a sexy the dwarf, girl there's the, the guy. there's a bunch of, okay. there's a couple of dudes yeah they're, bunch they're, of dudes. they're all different people Andy was confused he thought maybe it was the same sorry sorry about that no no but Andy <laughs> has a good point I haven't revealed it yet but I'm going to tell you in a second in the beginning of the movie there is like a towns dude and you're like what the fuck is Donald Sutherland doing here then fast forward i'm serious and then fast forward and they're on the road and they encounter like an old witch woman who warns them and says oh where are you going you're going to that place that's the castle of the living dead and she's played by donald sutherland <laughs> i swear to god and then they get there what? and yeah and then they get there and Chris, 
and then there's like a weird Igor dude, and then Christopher Lee comes up, and he's like, I'm Count Drago, I've invited you here. And it turns out that he's got all kinds of like nefarious schemes. He's like a taxidermist, but he he has like poisons, and he wants to preserve people's beauty, and he's doing all these ways. He's, you know, he's up to no good. It's like not a Dracula thing, but like a Dracula plus Frankenstein plus taxidermy kind of craziness. Sure. And so, man, this movie is so not so, and it's full of um, it's it's a little slow, but it's full of atmosphere. You know the um, what's that band? The progressive rock band, Crimson, King Crimson, King Crimson. Uh, you know yeah. that record they have with the uh, the the screaming yeah, face. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the screaming. Okay, red there screen is band. a building in a in on on a rock face which looks exactly like the green crimson screaming face. The door is the mouth. The wow. windows are the eyes. It's an actual it. place in this movie. It's Love like, it. you're like, what? <laughs> and the dwarf and the climbing the rocks and the uh, crazy kills. It's Now, don't get your hopes up. It's Like I said, it's a little slow. It's a little crotchety. There's some dubbing. But it's just so weird and, and, and odd. I was transfixed. Castle of the Living Dead, everybody. You got to check it out. I love it. I gotta, I'm got. i going to check this out. I can't wait. Castle of the Living Dead on uh, Tubi. Beautiful. Is that it, Squeaky, for you? That's it for me. Love it. Uh, Lauren. Hey, so I watched uh, one movie this week besides The Grotch. I watched The Baby from 1973 on Shudder. Oh, yeah. Uh, this has been on my... Uh, to watch list for a while just because the cover looked interesting and I quickly realized that it was pretty boring as a, as a movie um, so it's about a social worker named Anne she becomes she gets assigned to this case where these this mother and her two adult daughters are taking care of a baby but he's not a baby he's a full-grown man who acts like a baby and this is obviously quite disturbing in itself because you're like, okay, what the hell is going on with this guy? He's clearly a full-grown man. So you're, so she suspects abuse, obviously. <laughs> and um, she is convinced that he can be, you know, that he has normal brain function and isn't mentally handicapped or anything like that. Like he is just being severely abused into thinking that he is. So as the movie goes on, she becomes very like personally involved in the case and there's something clearly sketchy going on with the mother and the sisters in little vignettes that we get of them just kind of like hanging out together and um it's really disturbing because in a few parts it makes it seem like the baby is the baby oh my god the, the guy who's playing a baby is sexually like aware of himself um because of one particular scene with a babysitter and then it's also implied that he is him and one of his sisters kind of have a thing but that never goes anywhere it's very very weird um i just wish that they had expanded on some things a little bit more not ne not necessarily that stuff but like I'm had made it more others. obvious that he was being abused and that he was aware of himself and that he was not an actual child you know what i mean right um so and also the the poster is totally misleading like it has like a, a blonde chick on the front and she's like in a nighty and she's holding a little bear and then there's like big man feet coming out of, out of a crib like making it seem like it's gonna be way more nefarious and weird and fun but it was more so just so just like kind of boring and disturbing <laughs> um and the ending made me lose my mind. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. Um, really? Like, it was just like, ew. Like, it made me feel filthy when I got to the <laughs> ending. I was like, I just watched uh, an hour and 20 minutes of this to feel, like, literally disgusting after because it was just gross. Um, there was one good kill, though, which was good. I was like, oh, thank God. Like, at least it, at least it had one kill that was, like, kind of, kind of cool. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, so I watched The Baby. Uh, it's on Shudder. I guess watch it if you dare, but it wasn't exactly a great movie there you go. for the, me. The Baby, everybody. Infamous. Sick, sick 70s film, The Baby. I still haven't seen it. But it, I'm intrigued now uh -huh. by 
how grossed out Lauren was by the ending. I mean, <laughs> me and Ken have different tastes in movies. Ken could definitely love it. I mean, <laughs> I just didn't love it. <laughs> so I, I didn't like it that much. I didn't hate it. Like, I wasn't <laughs> pissed at it. But I was just like, well, eh, <laughs> more, more, could, more could have happened. Right. That movie creeped me out too, man. It it turned it off. Uh, yeah, Sque- Squeaky turned it off. Squeaky turned it off because why? What was, what was happening? It was, it was not very engaging. Okay, and it was right. icky. And it was really icky. Yeah, it sounds very icky. But so, some people like icky. Yeah. Uh, Andy, how about you, buddy? Um, I watched a few. I'll, I'll go through a couple real quick just to mention. Um, thanks to the uh, recommendations of my esteemed colleagues, Jen and I checked out uh, Dead Detectives. And uh, we got a kick out of it. It's uh, as uh, discussed, it's fun and funny. And I especially like uh, um, what's his name there, uh, Nick Gear, uh, Chris Gear. Sorry, um, from You're the Worst. I think he's a, a, a terrifically gifted comic actor. So that one gets a, a recommendation from me as well. And uh, also one that's uh, certainly horror adjacent. And I wouldn't be mentioning it except for the fact that. Um, it's extremely good and um, just uh, it's it's uh, an action revenge thriller. It's very taut, moves like a, a rocket ship through uh, 85 minutes or so. And the, the killings are just very much past your usual action fare into like the horror of man's and humanity to man. So Vengeance is Mine, uh, a quite a recent film. <clears throat> that I thought was very good and uh, and touches on horror. Uh, but the one that I watched and really thought was uh, uh, excellent fodder for discussion here is called Death of a Vlogger, um, which came out um, pretty recently. I believe it was 2019. Um, yes, uh, 2019. And uh, it's the story of this kid uh, in Glasgow who, uh, with his girlfriend and a couple of buddies, has been trying to get famous on the internet for quite some time, putting out all kinds of uh, comedic and quote unquote interesting and and weird videos. Just anything he thinks might have a chance of going viral. He's throwing all the shit at the wall, trying to get something to stick. And um, eventually he starts to get a lot of hits uh, on a little video he does where he's left alone in his apartment momentarily uh, after recovering from botched laser eye surgery. And it turns out his teacup is haunted and starts, you know, <laughs> jumping around the place. And then a door slams. So pretty goddamn scary stuff. I think you'll all agree. You know, we may have seen one or two horror films ourselves, but that sure. is next level stuff. Yeah, you know what crazy. I'm talking about. You know, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, from there, he says, geez, you know, now that I'm in this uh, haunted apartment where the doors slam and the teacup is haunted and moving about the place by itself, um, you know, I'm I'm scared. I, I don't want to go back. I, uh, but, you know, after a month and a half, his girlfriend is like, you know, I can't stay here any, any longer either. This is pretty fucking scary in its own right. So let's go back to your place and, you know, I'll leave you there and go back to my own goddamn life for five fucking minutes. So um, they swear a lot. They're Scottish. So, um <laughs> they go back to, to uh, the main character's place and uh, someone has, has busted up the place to a, you know, a mild degree. They've turned over the couch, for instance, and uh, put the TV down, face down on its screen That's and um, have, have neatly painted uh, prepare for laughter on the wall between some at. And uh, they're saying, boy. That's scary um, in their thick Glaswegian accents. And then suddenly, blam, the artwork flies off the wall. And it doesn't say prepare for laughter. It says prepare for slaughter. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. And man, it takes off like a Scottish cannonball from there. Oh, the scares, the thrills, the frights, the suspense, uh, the laughs. It's funny, too. <laughs> uh, and the cursing. Yeah, these people are Scottish. Um, so... Um, there's uh, there's a lot going on. This also moves along pretty quickly. Uh, it doesn't keep you, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it, it's, it's fun. It's funny. Uh, uh, it's scary. Um, it's presented like a, a found footage type of documentary where bits are assembled. They're saying, oh, they shot this. And, uh, you know, the investigative journalist is saying, oh, when I saw that, I reacted thusly. And, uh, you know. So uh, little bits of stuff that uh, people shot and made into a story about this guy who 
Is he living in a haunted apartment? Is he not? Uh, it remains to be seen. They keep you guessing until the final shot. But, um, you know, me personally, my mind was not on the guessing. It was just enjoying the way they were telling the story. Uh, I thought it was very engaging. And I was really scared. And it tripped up a lot of my personal things, like uh, the way they used to do horror movies, where it would make you scared to like get up and go across the room because you were too uh, freaked out. But why? Why? What? By what you were thinking about, like if uh, what you had just seen in the movie was happening to you right then, and your imagination ran away with you and were really scared. That used to happen to me a lot. And I'm lying in my bed next to my wife and some cats watching this movie, and I was frightened, you know. And there's like a sheet comes up off the floor. I'm like, ah, it's a ghost, um, which it really was. So don't scoff. Who laughed at me? Squeaky. Thanks a lot, pal. I was scared, man. So anyhow, um, give I was watch. on mute. Oh, OK. <laughs> Could it have been a ghost? Could have been. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I really liked Death of a Vlogger. I thought it was a lot of fun and I was scared. There you go, everybody. Death of a Vlogger is Andy's uh, big recommendation for the night. So there you go. There is uh, some stuff that you can add to your queue. Check out. Hey, and uh, let us know what you thought. You can call us on our hotline. Hey, uh, Rui, uh, 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 Squeaky, what is our what is our hotline? Let's uh, let's let it. Oh, I gotta find. I got. Give me a second because I don't have it on the top of my hands. Squeaky, hand. you should have that. that uh, I know you're you're absolutely right. I will take the minus ten points. <laughs> Put it on a card. I'm going to do it right now. Just give me a second. But but can you carry on and I'll chime in when it's uh, <laughs> good timing. All right. Well, while he gets uh, ready for that, I will play us the intro because it's time for Best Kill of the Week. That is gross. This is the part of the show where uh, you know it. We tell you what the best murder is that we've seen in a film this week. Stacy, what's the best kill of the week? Um, I think that in Kimmy, she um, she she uh, is trying to uh, escape from her her attackers, and she gets armed with a nail gun, and she shoots them with a nail gun, and Ooh. hits people in the head and the yeah. arms, and all kinds of crazy. It's crazy. Wow, a little nail gun action for Kimmy. Sounds good. Uh, Rui, what's the best kill of the week? Well, in Coven, there's not really too many. I mean, some somebody gets shanked to death. All right. Well, we'll have to take it. Yeah. We'll take that's the all you can do. We'll take the shanking. Uh, Larissa, what's the best kill of the week? You're muted. <laughs> Larissa, what's the best <laughs> kill of the week? Silence. So the best kill of the week <laughs> is on It Follows. And one of the kids doesn't know that the thing is knocking on his door. It looks like his mother. So he opens the door and he's like, Mom, what the fuck? Then the mom, quote unquote, jumps on him and starts having sex with him. And then like lighting comes what? out of it and like some yeah. water and shit. And he kind of like freezes, kind of like dries to it. While that thing is having sex with him, crazy. That's messed up. How can we compete with that? <laughs> in uh, in Wither, uh, it, it, probably the most graphic beheading I've ever seen. At least since oh, wow. the at least since the Rotten dot com days. Remember that days? Remember Rotten dot com? <laughs> uh, it was a very graphic beheading indeed. Uh, Wither, uh, Squeaky. What was the best kill of the week? Hey Ken, first of all, I want to tell you. Okay. Why not call us on our hotline? <laughs> yeah. Seven two four. 246 4669. And then you can tell me what you think the best kill of the week is. Rob didn't tell you what mine is. Right. In uh, Castle of the Living Dead, there were the main, I already told you about the whole fake uh, hanging thing and then the trick, but, or did I? But anyway, there's a really weird killing that I don't even understand where this guy, like, is fumbling around with these things and one of them is like a trap mini, like, I'm, I'm talking like, tiny um, crossbow and he touches it and the crossbow shoots goes into his eye guy falls down and he's dead wow boy that was really weird i didn't get it but i liked it <laughs> tiny crossbow sure ouch that happens what you do with it that counts right exactly uh, it's not the size <laughs> of the crossbow uh it's the <laughs> <laughs> thank you squeaky uh lauren what's the best kill of the week so at the end of the baby the 
mother of the baby and the two sisters break into Anne's house and the mother's by herself for a second. She all of a sudden get, like, is lo looking around. She gets some blood on her face and she's like, what happened? She looks up and one of her daughters has her like, entire throat slit oh and is God. just like leaning oh. over the thing, like dripping blood. I don't know. I thought that was like kind of, I was like, oh, that was actually kind of fun. Wow. <laughs> so, that's, that's something. Uh, and and Andy, what is... Him, so. <laughs> Andy, uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, and Andy, what is the best kill of the week? There's a, a really spooky one, um, which constitutes the hideous shock ending I dare not reveal of uh, Death of a Vlogger. Mm -hmm. So I'll just mention in uh, Vengeance is Mine, uh, there's a big climactic knockdown drag out between the main character and the main antagonist, where there is some kerosene spilled and then some tumbling through a fire and then the, you know, uh, requisite, I and you know uh, sorry if i was clipping there and then there's also a couple things where the the main guy is shooting people with shotguns and they go hurtling through the air love it love it there you go everybody there's our best kills of the week and now it's time to talk about our group watch we're exploring together I, the, the the key is we're experiencing this thing together and uh in, in fact i think spontaneity is a real big part of friendship so let's just wing it all right and uh and have a ball what do you say uh, we're going to do our best. This week's group watch is The Student Body. It was directed by Lee Ann Kerr. It is her first feature. Student Body has a 4.2 out of 10 on IMDb and a 2.4 out of 5 on Letterboxd, which is kind of right down the middle. Uh, so we're going to find out how accurate those ratings are. The first half of this movie plays out like a teen drama, right, Stace? Yeah. It takes place in a private school with a crew of uh, wealthy kids. Jane, played by Monsi Hernandez, is the brain of the group. And when the story opens, she's the only one that passes a test in her calculus class. Her teacher, Mr. Onspach, played by Kristen Camargo, is very strict and refuses to let them retake it. Jane's best friend, Merritt, played by Cheyenne Haynes, convinces Jane to see Onspach after class and try to convince him to let them have a redo. He makes her uncomfortable during the meeting, so she reports him, and he gets fired. Now, fast forward a few days later, and the gang breaks into the school to steal the gym teacher's liquor stash. But while they are there, somebody dressed as a school mascot starts killing them one by one with a sledgehammer. Who could it be? Well, realistically, there's only one person that it could be. <laughs> yeah. And that's who it is. Uh, gore score. No gore. A couple of puddles of blood. Mm, that's really it. All right. Uh, before we find out what everybody thought, I will quickly remind you of our rating system. If you like it, you give it a ding. If you really like it, rum spring a woo. If you don't like it, you give it a buzz. If you really don't like it, F or forget it. If you don't feel one way or another about it, you can give it, uh, this looks mediocre. If you're confused by it, you can give it discombobulated. If you're totally lost, of course you can give it, I'm totally lost. And if you really don't want to talk about it anymore, you give it, what's done is done. And that is our rating system. And I will remind you, uh, once again, that we are amidst the, the winter season, Stacy, which is mm -hmm. a very lean season when it comes to horror films. The A-list stuff doesn't come out in the middle of February. Mm. Everybody knows that. So we're doing our best with our new releases. <laughs> during these trying times. Sure. Uh, Ken is trying to placate me specifically, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, what did you think about Student Body? Hmm. So, yeah, it was okay. I think that um, for the type of story it is, it yeah. seems to play it very straight. Like, if you think it, something like this would be more, like, over-the-top campy. Yeah. Like, in an 80s kind of slasher kind of way. Um, I think it would have been a lot more fun yeah. if they would have played it that way. Um, I didn't hate it. Um, I just thought it, it just it was lacking something for sure. Um, so, I'm going to say... I mean... I'll give it a ding. I mean, it's watchable and it, it's it's okay. Like a like a. It's like a. What kind of a ding is that, Stace? A, a, a regular. Just ding. a regular ding. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think that's. I think this is how this one is squeaking by. It's just, <laughs> it, being just mediocre Hello? enough. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. It was. It was okay. By the way, I don't <laughs> believe that if if uh, Harley Quinn Smith wasn't Kevin Smith's daughter, yeah, that she would get any. Well, she plays she's, roles whatsoever. She was in what was she in? She was in something else. Oh, she's in that Cruel Summer. She plays the the friend in Cruel Summer, yeah. and she's basically the same exact character in that. 
I don't think is she, she the is she the Bond girl yeah, that, yeah. that with the funny yeah, dude? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she's no. a very good actress. Uh, and yeah, I don't, I think and I think that, she has zero charisma. I think it's the same yeah. character that she plays. That's the thing. Like yeah. that's that's who she maybe that's who I, she really is. I don't know. I just think she's <laughs> I, I just think she's getting by on her dad's name because I don't see why you would cast her otherwise. Smith. Right. Uh, thank you, Stacy. Yeah. Rui, what'd you think of the movie? Hey, this should resonate with you since it's about high school students oh man it's wild times at euphoria high school um this is nothing like euphoria yeah. exactly it's, it's not literally like nothing it. like euphoria not even close <laughs> i felt the uh, uh the lights the lighting i think they're trying to go for yeah. the uh you know <laughs> oh that lighting is that kind of lighting is all the rage these days um i call it bava lighting but it I think the internet has coined the term bisexual lighting. <laughs> um, nice. You, you call it Bava as in Mario Bava? Yeah, as in Mario Bava, yeah. You are, you're ahead that's, of the curve, teenager. Yeah, when I was working lighting tech, that's who I, uh, who I was inspired by with that lighting is Mario Bava. Um, but regardless of my professional standard, whatever. By the way, can you imagine, uh, Stacy being... Yeah. Can you imagine being inspired and influenced by Mario Bava, <laughs> and then and then your job is to to light the heavy leather topless dance party? <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> but like half of the lights don't even work. Yeah. <laughs> some of them are, some of them are crashing to the ground. <laughs> you know, or, Bob, Bob, Bob himself bur is bursting into flames. Sparking and <laughs> but but yeah. but you have to remember, Bob, Mario Bava was an availableist. He didn't have a lot to work with, yeah. but he was so talented as a painter and a master understander of lighting and stuff that he made yeah. it work. Same thing with Rui, buddy. Same thing with <laughs> there Rui. You, go. you had to be a magician to get those lights to work. Yeah. There oh, you yeah. go. Oh, All right. God. Go ahead, Rui. Um. It's a it's a weird teen movie. I think uh, first off, yeah, all of her friends are really shitty. Yeah, um, yeah. I, especially her best friend. She was yeah. really terrible. Um, like just consistently the worst advice you could possibly give. Um, teacher is a creepy asshole. You know, it's, I mean that's what he set out to do. So mission accomplished there. Um, the the mascot is kind of hilarious. Because Jesus Christ, what school would make a mascot that creepy? <laughs> um, and then I remembered what my school's mascot is, um, no matter how hard they try to sweep this under the rug. Um, we are the SHS Highlanders. Um, and so our mascot is a Scotsman. Sure, yeah. Uh, uh, there can be only one. Uh, there used to be a... <laughs> There used to be a um, a mascot head, which I may or may not have made disappear. Right. Um, but it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, probably probably offensive to Scottish people, but you know, um, does a you know whatever. We don't care about their opinion. We're not we're not number uh, one eighty nine in Scotland. Nope. Nope. Um, so yeah, it's just the movie is. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. I don't know. Just, eh. So I'm gonna give it a. Uh, this looks mediocre. This looks absolutely mediocre. There you go. One mediocre, one uh, unenthusiastic ding so far. Let's <laughs> let's move on to Lyser and see what she thought. Let me tell you something. From all the movies we have seen lately, this one is the best. Uh, oh, so yeah. That's a lot, that's a lot to say. <laughs> um, so I do have two questions. Did we ever find out what happened to the mom? Because she doesn't want to talk about it. The friend doesn't want to talk about it. But they are talking about it. But we never find out what happened with her, right? I already forgot about the mom. Which mom? Who's mom? Uh, the the main character's mom. Oh, Jane, Jane, yeah. And Jane's also, mom. why was she living in the forest? Did we ever? Yeah, we, find I, out we don't why? know why she was in the forest. I think she just liked to hang out there. I yeah. Mean, 
They just uh, they just wanted to you know have a you know a unique character trait. She, I think she just like yeah, to... but she was like sleeping there one night, and then she just got up and went to school like she was living there. That's, that's, that's what I thought. Weird. That's what, I it, that's what that. it sort of looked. That's, that's what weird. I said too. I said is I Brian? said when she, it was morning, it was like right before the first bell, and she's sitting in the in the woods there. And then she gets up and goes into school. And remember how she had like the first morning she had stuff on her backpack, yeah. like a like bird stuff, a poop poop, or bird something. poop, yeah. And she had a leaf in her hair. Oh, that's right. So I right. said, uh, that's what I woods. said to Ken. I was like, is she living in the woods? Is that's what's happening? But Maybe. we never found out what happened there. So there, it has a lot of things that never yeah, got was... resolved, in my opinion. Yeah, this movie um, has a lot of that. I, I felt really bad about Frenchie. That was my favorite character. He was so stupid and all over the place. Yeah. And it was so sad to see him gone. Um, the but, first one. Ugh. Yeah, and the first one. Come on, guys. That was the best character it. you had. He you know, didn't deserve it, exactly. Why was he calling um, his kid dad? The other kid dad. Oh, yeah, it was weird that he called, him, he called yeah, the other like, kid dad. I know why. That was very weird. I know why. I know the reason. Why? What's the reason? I know the reason. Okay, so kids nowadays, if they have a role model or somebody they follow, they call them mom and dad. It happened to me. Yes. When my season came out, I have a bunch of baby queers calling me mom. And I'm like, why are these people calling me mom? And then somebody explained that I was a role model to them. And that's why they were Uh, calling me mom. I'll be damned. So that's like a young people thing. Yeah. And there's a very young people script. You know, Uh uh, it's also like, you know, there's the mom of the group or the dad. The respect of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very try. It's a tribal thing. Wow. Yeah, wow. so that's why they get called mom and dad now. I'll be damned. The kids are so interesting these days. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's the first movie lately from the movie that we all have to watch that I haven't been on my phone that much that I actually saw without like skipping it. I just had those two questions because I, I watched the movie completely and I didn't get resolution on those topics. Um, so it's a soft thing compared to the rest. Yeah. It's not the best, but compared to what we have seen, I think it's the best and it deserved that thing. Okay, let's give it a soft thing. There we go. That's a soft. That is a soft thing. All right. <laughs> How soft. That was. Uh, to, me, pumpkin pie. to me, if you're going to make a slasher, then you've got to give up the goods. There's got to be some crushed skulls uh-huh. and some ripped off arms. You know. Uh, this it has film. To be outrageous. Yes, this film did not think it needed it, but yeah. it did. Yeah. It did need it. Yeah. Mm hmm. I think uh, some, uh, most of the performances were pretty good, though. Particularly, I thought Christian Carmago did a great job with the evil teacher. His character, you know, the way he delivered his lines had a real snap to it, you know. Uh, so I thought he was good. And I, I thought the high school drama stuff was engaging, too. I just really wanted to see more murder. You know, uh, you know, would have been nice. It's a slasher movie. Uh, there's no, and there's no reason not to. There's no reason not to. They just it just like they decided to go for a more PG thirteen kind of vibe to it. But yeah. hammer the shit out of those kids. Yeah, Come exactly. On. You gotta because yeah. the mascot guy looked looked menacing. Looked menacing. Yeah. yeah. He had a sledgehammer. Had a sledgehammer. Just crack crush some skulls, man. He had all the props to smash those kids. He totally did. Them. And he didn't do it. Uh but so no. but I mean, you know, for the most part it was okay. Uh, so I'm also I'm gonna have to give it a, a, a soft a middling <laughs> a middling ding. I will have to add that the the actress that play um, her name is Cheyenne in real life the best friend. Yeah. She was good because I hated this kid. I wanted her to die. Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. Awful. Mm-hmm. So I think that she really accomplished her acting on this character. Well, I think I think that she was authentically awful. She just seemed like an awful teenager. <laughs> Whereas, whereas Harley Quinn Smith's uh, character, she was like the tough girl. She seemed one hundred percent like, oh, I'm I'm reading the lines that I was given. But the other girl, yeah. the Cheyenne girl, yeah. really felt like that was she was embodying oh, yeah, this, yeah. this character. Mm-hmm. She was really good. So maybe she was closer to the actual character. And the the Jane girl was good too. Yeah, 
No, yep. I thought most of the, most of the acting was was very good. Was decent, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Squeaky, what'd you think, buddy? So this uh, this movie got me right got me right at the beginning because it's a teenage movie. It's a horror movie that sets up all the tropes and everything. But here's the thing. Yeah. If you're going to make a teenage slasher movie, you cannot wait for an hour to have the first kill. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. watch some fucking and, Exactly. And then, and then, and then, like Ken, you said, they're not gory. Now, to be honest, I don't really need the gore. I'm, you know, if the kills are inferred viciously enough and they, I, for me, they were here, that's fine. Now, now this movie as a teenage movie, it won me over immediately because they looked <laughs> like teenagers. They did. They yeah. acted For like sure. teenagers. The the oppressive authority acted like the oppressive authority. The conflicts were palpable. It was you were put into the position of the teenagers, which is what the, which is the position you want to be. You want to be when you watch this kind of movie in the oppressed. You want to feel that anger, that rage, and I felt it. And I loved it. I loved. Mo, Mo, I don't know how to say her name. Montes Hernandez. She was just arch. Everyone was archetypical, and they. I think they all brought it, including Haley Quinn Smith. I, I know Hi. people don't like her acting. I thought she brought everything to the role, and here's why. I think everyone as an ensemble really brought it. They 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 worked together. It was a cooperative effort, and they all played their parts as they were supposed to. And I love this this stupid Frenchy guy. He was. As you, as as I think uh, Lierse said, he was like the he was like this Jeff Spicoli of his time, but he you know <laughs> he got let off early. You know they all really brought it, and come on, that script and the production nuances, they like grow it uterus. I mean, it's very Heather's ish, but it, it, it you know it certainly got us uh, some kind of smirk out of some people. And uh, like I said about the production, you know, there's all these signs on the wall and everything. It was a lot of winking and nodding going on and it was effective i thought um yeah no i thought it was as a whole piece it was really well thought out well crafted good they 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 were working with limitations so i think that's why it fell short a few marks i again i'm not sure why they didn't pull the the, the horror tropes to the full tilt like they should have or could have but yeah i was all bordering on very, I was very close to Rum Springer Woo, so I'm gonna give it a super hard ding. Oh, wait a minute, let me make sure this is. <laughs> oh, let me see. Here we go, super what? hard, super hard. There we go. <laughs> it did have some. It did have some. It did have some, it did have some uh, funny moments. Um, a lot, I thought. I thought the uh, the gym scene when they had to do pull ups. That whole scene is funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, <laughs> that was so neat. The kid couldn't yeah. do any pull ups. Yeah. No. Do you guys get really like my? Uh, PE class was totally different. Everybody got an A, even if you sat down the whole class. Yeah. Do you guys really have to like do pull-ups oh, and yeah. do that rope yeah, thing that you do? Sure. You really no. have to take summer class if you don't pass it? Oh, yeah. No. 100%. Of course. No. We all get A's on that. <laughs> no, as long as you're out there, like even talking to somebody and you showed up to class, you got an A. No, Literally, the works. rule wow. of my gym class is... You just need to not be sitting down. They're fine if you just walk the track for an nice. hour with your friend yeah. talking or just play badminton, which, by the way, I slaughter badminton. <laughs> nice. I will challenge any, you know, anybody who thinks they can beat me in badminton, please call our line. If you think you and- can. <laughs> Yeah, call the number. Squeaky was the number. Uh, Yes, Mm -hmm. let's call the hotline and you can. What is that? Is that the board game or the one with the the tiny brackets? That's the one with the the tiny brackets. Then the the birdies, birdies. the shuttlecocks. Exactly. That's a Uh, weird fucking game. Hey, uh, why not call us on our hotline seven two four. Two four six four six six nine. If you want to challenge Rui to a game of badminton, yeah, he's up for it. Limey bastard. He'll take you on any time. Seven two four. Say that again, Squeaky. Seven, seven two four two four six four six six nine. We'll set it up. We'll have to. We'll set yeah. it up in my backyard, and then we'll we'll grill hot dogs afterwards. It'll be a yes. it'll rain or I'm hail there. or wind Turn or on. snow. You'll <laughs> not me- beat me at badminton. Right. Oh. It'll be a it'll be a hell of an afternoon. It was funny because it was like uh, you know they had the thing where. 
um, everybody to do pull-ups, and yeah. then the kid couldn't do any pull-ups, and yeah. then the jock guy was in back booing him. Yeah, which is like <laughs> that was really funny. It was funny. boo, and because it was like that's your worst nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't do this. I'm, be, I'm being embarrassed by this teacher. The people are fucking booing me because I can't do this. Yeah. Uh, very funny because it was very, very it true to the, to the nightmare of gym class. <laughs> if you're yeah. not athletic in high school, yeah. it's just awful. I was okay with that, that kind of stuff. It was the actual sports that I wasn't okay right. with because I was oh, tiny. Yeah. Uh, Lauren. Uh, so I thought this movie was boring. Um, I didn't fully hate it. Like I've hated every other movie we watched this year so far. But I like. <laughs> I wasn't. Whoa. <laughs> hey, does that surprise anyone that I've hated every no, movie no. so far? And no, we're not surprised. You know, they and Rui's Ru- 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 been uh, predicting everybody's ratings since the oh, last yeah. few episodes, so we know. Uh, Lauren, if you're I've said, 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 said that I've hated them. <laughs> I'm not even hiding it. But anyway, this oh, I movie, really, yeah. I actually didn't hate it. I didn't love it by any stretch of the imagination, but I did. I thought it was okay, but it was like, there's just uh, things that, you know... It was so predictable. Like everything that happened was so predictable. There was only one possible killer, which is like so shitty because then you're not surprised or shocked by anything that happens. There were no kills, which was a total sin to me. I was like, really? Not even one good kill, none of them? Um, Which is like bullshit to me. Sorry, like that's bullshit. It's like I'm watching a, a, a slasher. When the hell's the slashing gonna happen? Um, I didn't like any of the characters that much. Um, and everyone loved Austin's Hujar's character, the Frenchie kid. I fucking hated him and was so happy. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God he's dead. Because I could barely understand a word he goddamn said. (laughs) I can't use this voice every time I'm acting. I'm like, shut up, dude. Shut up. Like, I literally hated him. I was like, okay, thank God he's getting killed first. Um... Him and, actually, him and Harley Quinn Smith are dating in real life. How funny is that? Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Um, but yeah, even her weird acting couldn't carry him. I thought that he was terrible. But anyway, um, I also didn't really like Jane. I thought that she was, I mean, the acting of her was good. So good that I was like, oh my God, girl, grow a backbone. Like, she uh, really mean, crazy. grow a uterus? <laughs> she, right. No, that girl, no, the best friend legitimately just learned, just got out of health class and was like, labia, vagina. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sweetheart, do you want to show me a diagram about a fucking female like, body? Like, what are you trying to say? Like, she needed to shut up. She's got to work it into memory for the pop quiz. <laughs> right. Yeah, really. She was like, my, my mom's going to staple my labia to the floor. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you? Descriptive imagery. They do teach that yeah. in English. Well, I okay. So, and also there was like a lack of a soundtrack. Although I did think that the way that they introduced the killer, like little things where like he's kind of walking by screens or he's walking by doors, and there isn't an emphasis on him. It usually, it's just depending on you seeing him. I thought that was actually effective. I thought that that was like kind of cool and unique. Um, you know, not a lot of people do that. They really depend on the dun dun factor of the music. But when you don't have enough of a soundtrack, it makes the movie <coughs> emptier, in my opinion. Yes. Um, so, like, that. when they're just chatting and there's no music, you're like, um, okay. And that guy, the guy that they tried to make a low-key love interest for Jane, as soon as he started talking about, like, the totalitarian government and stuff, I was like, girl, get away from him. <laughs> He's <is> bad. <laughs> I was like, oh no, definitely get the hell away from that guy. Um, okay, that's so basically, uh, I was gonna give this a buzz, but I don't think it's a full on buzz. I think it's just a mediocre, like it just needed work. Um, it wasn't absolutely top down terrible, but it needed work to me. This looks absolutely mediocre. A mediocre from Lauren, and finally, Andy, what'd you think, buddy? Well, uh, a lot of good points have been made, and uh, I kind of agree that the uh, the first half of the movie was uh, was the, the the part that was well done. Uh, I did believe some of these kids and their crappy, you know, 
kid relationship with one another and uh and their terrible high school and their awful randy and math teacher um who uh, it was nice to see get his just desserts um but uh yeah along with the rest of my esteemed colleagues i was like the clock's ticking here you know half the movie's gone by and you're just goofing around will you start killing people uh you know this has been a little better than expected so far. Will you get to the goddamn point, please? And from there, once they start actually getting to the horror movie part, the film is an absence, a void, filling in shapes, fussing with edges, but the forms are weightless. The thoughts, uh, more like thoughts than images. You don't look at the picture so much as launch yourself into its trackless Empyrean. And beyond its obvious design flair, the work looks easy because it is. It's monumental for what has been put into the pictorial space, but for what is left out, emotional engagement, the fundamental theme of Western art since the Renaissance. <laughs> so since the good part and the bad part outweighed each other, or weighed each other, uh, counterbalanced one another. So uh, precisely, I thought it was the epitome of mediocrity. Ooh, another mediocre. This Let's get an applause for Professor Andy. Mediocre. Yes, exactly. Let's hear uh, a yeah, little seriously. applause for his incredible <laughs> the summation right there, of geez. the experience. There you go, everybody. That's what we all thought about Student Body. Now, next week, if you want to follow along, next week's group watch is the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot, which is uh, premiering on Netflix. So that should be fun to see. Leatherface and the gang... Once again, Let's hope. is it Leatherface Play. now or just old, like 70-year-old Leatherface? <laughs> no, I guess we'll find out. Wrinkle face? Because it looks like they have an old Sally now, which would suggest that they also have an old what? Leatherface. Mm. So we'll find Hold out. Uh, it'll be fun either way um, to uh, see what's, what's up. All right, uh, time for the plugs. Snapchat, Instagram story, ooh, selfie, selfie, me. Uh, this is the part of the show where you can plug whatever it is that you want to plug. I have no rules when it comes to plugging. I, I no no uh, no no safety barrier, Stace. You can go yeah. any direction you want. Yeah. That's how I feel about the plugs. Hmm. And Stace, guess what? You're first. Oh boy. What would you like to plug? Um, hmm. well, I started watching on um, Hulu, uh, Hulu original series called Nine Perfect Strangers. All right. Um, it's about a group of people who go to this health and wellness resort. It's got a lot of big names in it. It's produced and um, stars Nicole Kidman, um, Melissa McCarthy's in it, Michael Shannon's in it. Michael Shannon is so good. Oh. Yeah, he's always so good. He plays a, a school teacher in it with his family, and um, it's so like not how you usually see Michael Shannon. So it's really cool. Um, and uh, it's got a bunch of other people you'll recognize. Um, it's, it's, I am not through with it yet. I just started it. I watched the first few episodes. Um, it's this health and wellness resort that's like in the middle of, you know, like sort of nowhere, um, really beautiful and, um, you know, obviously for the wealthy and Michael Shannon's family is there. Um, they got a reduced rate because he's a school teacher. So yeah. for whatever reason, they give him reduced rate. They put everybody on like a special diet and they have all these different things they make them do. Um, but it seems like there's definitely something like going on that's weird under the surface. So I haven't discovered that yet, but it's definitely want, makes me want to keep watching it. Is it eels like that movie, Cure for Wellness? I don't think that there's eels. <laughs> I think that they, they have them drinking. Now that I'm not watching it. They have them drinking these smoothies every day. So I yeah. think that's something to do with the smoothies. The and smoothies made of people. And they're also they're yeah, also probably. taking blood from people every uh -oh. day. Um, saying it's you know to like check their blood for stuff, so um, they're yeah, turning I, into them into I, vampires. I think that there's definitely something Not weird sure. going on, but I don't know what. Okay, so what's the name of that show? Uh, Nine Perfect Strangers. Nine Perfect Strangers. We'll check that out on Hulu. Uh, Rui, what is your plug for the week? Uh, well, it's uh, you know, I'll just stick to the basics. Uh, I got the uh, box of chocolates from L. A. Burdick. Okay, yeah. spelled B. <laughs> U R 
Dick, D I C K. That's some pricey <laughs> chocolate, is what that is. Bird Dick. Stacy, you know about yes. this chocolate. I, I've got that chocolate for like work events, like yeah. corporate stuff I've ordered it for. And yeah, it's very pricey. And wow. it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. It's very pricey. And he's, uh, he's enjoying it, though. It's good stuff. And I'm enjoying it. I can't eat all of these, however. Uh, Not today. Yeah. Send, no, send, it, send, it, send it our way. No, 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 some no, just... of them I cannot, uh, I cannot consume. Oh, because they got um, food in them. Yeah. Right. So if anybody wants to drive, uh, you know, uh, Squeaky, if you want to drive from New York, I got. Uh, hey, I don't even know how to drive. Waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. you have to take the train. Yeah. The more yeah. you drive, the less intelligent you are. <laughs> right. I, what a general nation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they check them out. You know, they come in these nice wooden boxes. You can order online um, from them, too. Yeah, it's in Harvard, um, you know. Pretty close to the red line stop. Uh, Armageddon Records is also in uh, Harvard, so check them out too. Yeah. Ooh, I heard about that place. Armageddon's yeah. great. Or you could dump your stupid boyfriend, go on a date with Rui, and get a box oh. of these chocolates given I, to you. If you would like to, if you would like to go on a, listening. I, if you would like to go on a date with Rui, you can call our hotline, which is that's yeah. right. What's our hotline uh, again, Squeaky? So our hotline is. <laughs> Seven two four two four six two seven two four two four six four six six nine. That's a lot of sixes. Gotta if make you put all those sixes together, you've got a triple six or six six six, Woo. and that's the the, 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 the <laughs> devil horns. And if you want to commit to the devil horns, which you know you do, <laughs> you're gonna have a great really day this with with Rui. Yeah, if you are age appropriate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you're an age appropriate female, which is his procliv- proclivity. Please give us uh, a call, and we'll we'll set something that up. Number again, is so seven two four two four six four six six nine. Exactly. <laughs> Appropriate <laughs> age being <laughs> below drinking, below the legal age. Yeah, exactly. Of drinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, you know, he's, he's high school he's age. He's seventeen, so you know, yeah. you figure it out. Uh, Larissa, <laughs> what do you think? So, if you are a female interested in females, you can also use that number and leave me. If you're between the ages of 30 to 42, you can drop a message for me over there. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I also want to plug, now are my real plugs. I've been watching Succession on Ooh. HBO. What a great, crazy show. I really like it. It's very good. I'm almost finishing season two. Um, Ozark, if you're in it or not, Ozark has their last season out there. I saw it last week in one day. It's great, so go there, watch it over. And also, follow my art account, Lirsa, L-Y-R-S, dot art, and buy my art. Beautiful. We will do that for sure. Uh, I would like I'll to... leave a message. Uh, exactly, leave a message. I would like to plug a book, uh, Perverse Titillation by Danny Shipka. It is a book about exploitation films from Italy, Spain, and France from 1969 <sighs> to 1980. So if that era of film floats your boat, you will love it. That's exactly my kind of thing. So I was into it and it gave me a bunch of recommendations for films I hadn't seen yet, including A Bell from Hell. That's how I ended up watching that one. Mm. Uh, so check that out. Now, let's move on to Squeaky. Uh, so I want to plug. So here's the thing, Ken. Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday was Sunday. You show sure us. And Sunday was the premiere installment of Sundays on Fire, secret Hong Kong 35 millimeter feature. My pal Grady Hendrix, who was one of the founders of the New York Asian Film Festival, he's not involved anymore, but he, I've known him for, for many years. And he, you know, in the early days, he used to come out wearing a leopard skin suit. And he did that yesterday. Nice. And it was great. Yeah. So, anyway. You know, I spent my 90s, like all, like, you know, 89 to 96, whatever, before I moved to Taiwan, every week going to Hong Kong crazy movies. And Andy knows what I'm talking about. In the Hong, in the Chinatown movie theaters in New York. And I would see all these crazy hyperbolic action, horror, comedy, what have you. So that, so did Grady and, and some of my other friends. And they're reliving that by showing these movies they don't tell you what it is until you get until it's on the screen 
so it's a surprise. And yesterday they did a classic. I, I, he, he had given hints in the description. I knew what it was, and it was so much fun to see it again. Imagine people jumping, kicking, putting, setting each other on fire, throwing bombs at each other, try, you know, opening up grenades and throwing away the wrong parts, things like that. Um, you know, lots of hilarity, lots of action, lots of what the hell are you guys doing? And it was at my friend, my friend John Woods, he opened up in Williamsburg. Now, let me ask you, which is the cooler place, Worcester or Swampscott? Oof. Oh, Worcester. Worcester, yeah. Okay, so yeah. imagine Worcester has a movie theater and then you open up another branch in Swampscott. Right. That's what happened here. So so Williamsburg is like the hip place. And actually, Prospect Park is all for, also pretty hip, but it's farther away. So they opened up another, my, my pal John, he opened up another branch of his Nighthawk Theater, which is a super cool theater. It's, it's a cinnamon draft, draft house, like, um, like um, you know, the you know that one. The Alamo. Alamo. Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's, it's very local and very cool. And uh, so you go there. I ordered brunch. I had breakfast burritos and a Bloody Mary. It was really fun. And I saw a bunch of friends, and I want to plug that because they're going to be doing that the the I think the second Sunday of every month until the at least April when they're doing the Hong Kongathon. They've been doing this for a few, few years, which is a 12-hour marathon with six of these films. Like I said, you don't know what they are until they're on screen. Although I have some insider info, so I'm very excited. <laughs> And so that's my big plug. If you're in the New York area, or even if you're not, you should, you know, travel to, to catch all this stuff. And uh, I think that's enough. I probably could go. Oh, there's one more thing I want to plug. Thanks to Kelly, who inspired me. I made a really great Valentine's playlist on YouTube. It's unlisted. But if you want to check it out, I'll give you the Your link. You, if you call us <laughs> on our hotline. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. So uh, a lot of things to call Squeaky for. Uh, Lauren, what would you like to plug? Um, I would love to plug my social medias. Uh, my uh, at Lomain Pandas is on Instagram for my art, my real life. And I would like to plug at Lauren Loves Books for pictures of books and my reviews of them. And mine's not really a plug, but it's a shout out to my Valentine, Chris. Um, I love him. I love you so much. And I'm really, really grateful that I have him as a partner. Um, just want to tell the world that nice. <laughs> and he, we don't, I, we don't, I don't like getting gifts on Valentine's day, but however, he gave me, he surprised me with concert tickets and that is the way to my heart. So Ooh, which concert? So, Tame and Paula. I did not <sighs> think we were going to be able to go because their the tickets were kind of like, I was like, Oh, we already have so much going on with t concerts and crap this year, but he surprised me with them anyway. Beautiful. And we had a lovely dinner what and a, a really good day. And I love you, Chris. Thank you oh, for being so nice. my Valentine. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lauren. And thank, thank you, Chris. Uh, finally, Andy, what about you, buddy? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Ken. Now, here's the thing. I want to plug, uh, much like Lauren, my socials. Uh, at any excuse, you can see the third episode of my terrifying multi-part series, Encounters with the Paranormal. It Ooh. dropped today. Oh, yes, indeed. And this is a very scary one. Feel free to go back and watch every single episode again and again, because, you know, you'll sit your pants in terror. And that's wow. what we're all here for, right? Holy so hard. Damn, you sold it, my oh. brother. Oh, thank you, Squeaky. I really appreciate it. You inspire me, my man. So uh, as Likewise. do you all, as do you all, uh, with the collages and the teenage exorcisms and, and everything. And, you know, while we're at it, I want to proclaim my love for Chris, too. <laughs> <laughs> me three that's all we love you chris what? What? you'll not be only, seeing us all very soon do we soon. love you chris but but stacy i've yeah. i've loved chris for a long time yeah yeah longer oh. than he's known me before, before <laughs> lauren even met him i i, I loved chris heavy necker cardo yes true story <laughs> all right uh so there's a lot of love in the air but it really is it's really it's time to go We're, we gotta go home We're going home stacy going home But listen, I thought this was a pretty successful broadcast. I'd say that was a pretty successful broadcast. Even even with Donald Sutherland. Even without Kelly, we we managed to to pull it off. <laughs> we've had oh, some. I have. We've had some good times. Wasn't the same we had some great times. Kids laughing, smiling, eating hot dogs, yeah. opening <laughs> presents. Eating hot dogs. <laughs>
<laughs> but now we gotta go. So a couple of things to remember. So if you're on MySpace, get the fuck off of it. Roy, this is your time to say your line without yeah, Kelly bothering you. This is a special. Uh, this one goes out to uh, Miss Kelly Capel. Don't let the hag ride you. Oh God damn it! <laughs> you don't rock out with your fucking cock out tonight. Uno is nice. never gonna tag you. I'll on get you. Excuse. All right. I'll get you. <laughs> All right. Not much left to say except for good night, good luck, goodbye. And of course, don't forget to dream well. And we'll uh, we'll see you back at the house. All right, there you go, buddy. Have fun. See you at the house. And we'll see you next time on the Heavy Leather Horror Show. We gotta get out of here.